is sponsored by Spell Rogue, your next deck building roguelike obsession from Guidelight Games and Ghost Ship Publishing. Available now in early access. Cast powerful spells with the mythical mana dice as you manipulate rolls to duplicate, split, flip, and enchant your cards with spell effects to bend fate to your will. Because Spell Rogue has deck building and dice rolling, and that's double the nerd thing. Experiment with dozens of legendary artifacts and hundreds of upgradable spells to build some truly wild combinations. And those will come in handy as you attempt to cleanse the land and annihilate the monstrous Void Walkers. Because let's be honest, voids are very dangerous and nobody should be walking anywhere near them. Head on over to Spell Rogue's Steam page to learn more about the game and join in on the early access adventure today. Because those mana dice ain't gonna roll themselves. <laughs> Welcome back to Firelink Podcast. This is episode number 12 for Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. My name is Marty Saliva, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Casey Wosu, Nick Kalandra, producer Eric, who tried to tell me, wait, 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 while I'm talking, and I was like, I'm just going to keep rolling through, and eventually we'll get audio, instead of like me pausing and being like, what do, what do I say? I was like, no, I'm just going to roll right through this. This is fine. This is fine. Eric, Eric will fix it at some point. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of Firelink. We are so glad to have you here. Uh, big, big show today. Uh, main topic, we're going to be chatting about Final Fantasy VII Remake. I've put 100 human hours into that video game. Wow. Yeah, we Marty's kind of clickbaited y'all. Uh, the, the title says, we put 100 hours? No, it was Marty. <laughs> I mean, I've, put, I've put 10. There you go, 110 hours collectively. <laughs> uh, and uh, I see your super chat, August. Uh, I will get to it in a second. Don't worry. Uh, I thought it was great. Big thumb up. Two big, two big. You just got up. to it. <laughs> two big thumbs up. No, no, no. But you we answered the super chat without reading. No, no, no. But I didn't read the super chat. There's a lot of nuance and layers and whatnot to it. Oh. Cool. Uh, but uh, while that's going to be a, a, a celebratory, triumphant topic, uh, this has been a, a shitty week for the industry. It's a whole year that's been mm -hmm. filled with, man, look at these cool games. And then why is everything terrible for everyone? Uh, we were just going to talk about the PlayStation layoffs that happened. And then hour, like two hours ago, they announced EA had uh, massive layoffs as well. Uh, that, that, that includes uh, studios closing, uh, games being canceled, um, thousands of people losing their jobs. Uh, so we're going to chat about that uh, along with uh, Pokemon. <laughs> it just doesn't, I don't know why Pokemon's here, but uh, there was a Pokemon Presents and uh, we, it turns out we're not getting a core Pokemon game in theory. We're not getting one this year, uh, but they did announce what the future of Pokemon is going to be in terms of a new Legends game, which is entirely takes place in one city, which I'm going to tell you, good idea. It's also that city's modeled after Paris. So this is ostensibly right. like a Blade game. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> This is not a terrible idea. This is going to be great. This, this is going to be great. Absolutely movie. terrible you're gonna idea. There's going to be crow. Run like shit we'll, already. We'll, you're going to eat crow. We'll get there. No. We'll get there. We'll get there. You're going to eat crow. Fuck off, Nick. Uh, <laughs> how are you guys doing? <laughs> I do. I went over the topic. And so this is the part where <laughs> how, we. How are you, Nick? Have you fucked off? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I did last week. When how I, was your. I'm very you glad I survived. I'm glad I survived. You got BK'd. Like we, I, I BK'd and then I came back and now we have a, a fancy new logo. So I guess it all worked out in the end. Shout out to Javed Goodblood. What a, yeah. what an artist. What a genuine artist. Yeah. If I had to rank the rest of uh, us members of our foolish. team based on artistry, he'd be number one. And I'm gonna be uh, honest, I don't know who number two would be. I, you know what? I feel like it's kind of neck and neck with him and Omar in terms, of, in terms of this artistry. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Omar's like good. I got, to, I, mm, I can't even say Omar's, this. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna spoil a little bit of stuff. Remind me to, no, remind me to tell you guys. Do a little bit, like do it. Vaguely. No, it, it was it's adventure is not related. Omar showed me something. I was like, this man is a genius. Yeah, <laughs> Omar's good. Omar's good. Um, Nick, what do you what say? One nice thing about Omar. He's he's been with me longer than everybody else here, so. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. he's like my brother. <laughs> Aw, hello, my brother. 
Um, <laughs> little Omar brother. <laughs> little Omar brother. brother. <laughs> little Omar brother. I, um, I, don't, I don't know if the chat knows how him and I met, but basically, like, I had, I did the gaming mentary Kickstarter, and then after we finished those documentaries, it was a, it was a team previous to Omar being involved. Those guys kind of walked out after the gaming mentor Kickstarter went off and did their own thing. And I basically had a documentary lined up to do Divinity, and I was like, oh shit, I need somebody to go do this. And so Omar had actually sent an application to work on three minute reviews. And I was like, oh hey, uh, you got some really good video editing skills over there. You want to go to Belgium and film a documentary? He's like, huh? I was like, yeah, let's pay it too. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so we had never even met until we got to Belgium and we were like in the in a little tiny hotel room together where like the beds were like literally touching <laughs> that did, did you commit Omar's your original so lucky. sin what well did, i said did you commit your original sin <laughs> no. I was it Casey, what would you what did you say <laughs> i was gonna say like that that sounds like the plot of that horror movie hostel like yeah yeah <laughs> Omar's so we're, lucky we were he could have just been auctioned off <laughs> he could have killed me too <laughs> no I don't like believe, to kill him. you were the one offering why <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, what a free, what a free, not a free trip, a paid trip to Belgium. With some yeah, dude you never met. <laughs> you never <Yeah>. coming home. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's that's how we met. <laughs> there you go. Um, see, yeah, that's the big thing. The only big news of the week is that Omar's great. <laughs> <laughs> Omar's great, and you better fucking watch Adventures Die several times this weekend because that man has, <laughs> has put oh, his man. blood into it. I can't wait. It's a goodie. It's a goodie. Um, yeah, and then just as some programming notes before we get into it, uh, we probably won't be doing this podcast okay. for the next two weeks, right? Because you guys aren't even back after the next one, are you? Uh, we, we get back, they get back the 14th? No, 13th, 14th, 13th, I don't know. 14th. Yeah, we won't do, we will Sounds not have, right. we will not have, we will not have Firelink for two weeks, yes. Mm, <laughs> yeah, that seems right. Uh, so yeah, that's just a, uh, just a minor programming note. Um, and Wait, we'll, we'll have some other, we, we could, we could do it that. Let's just assume week, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And then if it happened, it's fine. Okay. We're going to assume it's not going to happen. And then if it happens, it's a little miracle. Yeah, you, know, you, all get your Wednesdays, you all get your Wednesdays to do things. You can catch up with folks. You probably got folks you need to catch up with. <laughs> Everyone's got some folks. folks. Everyone. Could be family, could be friends, could be uh, celebrities you like. Yeah, get reminded as to why you don't catch up with your folks as yeah. often. <laughs> I always wonder, what's, what's Snooki doing? Is she all right? Remember you the, can, uh, you the can New take Jersey? the next two Wednesdays and make I, all the time in the world to get your ass on the Netflix and go watch Warrior. Because if they cancel it for a third time, I'm canceling Second Wind. It was in the top ten. I've noticed that. It was in the top ten. So like folks, it. it seems like people are watching it. We're all fired if folks don't watch the show. Yes. <laughs> oh, dang. I feel like that's something as as uh, employee owners we could vote against. I will like find a way to get around it. It's probably in the bylaws. Uh, yeah, it's probably in the bylaws. Um, it's in well, really, really small text, but it's there. uh Oh God, that's the yeah, I, I didn't zoom in. That was that was a problem. Uh, and before uh, before we get started on the uh, PlayStation and uh, EA layoff news, a couple uh, super chats to go through quick. Appreciate everyone uh, donating. First off, great to see so many members of the Green Gang, uh, and great to see so many people donating. Uh, obviously, that is we don't have a current new goal because uh, GDC has fund was been funded and is upon us. Uh, but these trips are extremely expensive, and all this money just goes back into the company to make the cool shit we like. So yes. thank you all so much for supporting, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Twitch, whether it's on Patreon, whether it's on Ko-Fi, whether it's on fucking PayPal, whether you throw some, put some money into a bottle and throw it into a large body of water with hopes that it will come to one of our landlocked cities. We appreciate it all. Uh, August. You know what? That last one, I was going to say I don't appreciate you that. To, you, can float it. It. you can float it down the Missouri River. We'll find it at some point. See? And I'm sure Nick lives Riverside, so it'll be fine. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Nick just goes out all the time. Goes out yeah, panning for... every weekend. <laughs> uh, the aforementioned August with a twenty dollar dono. Thank you so much, August. Got to be honest, I'm not too happy to see the ellipses dot 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 at the end of the title here. Please tell me that you loved it. Uh, I did, August. I thought it was uh, wonderful. If you are a Final Fantasy VII fan, this game is for you. If you're not a Final Fantasy VII fan, I'm extremely curious to hear how any of those people are going to think of it because everyone who reviewed the game is already a Final Fantasy VII fan. So that's the thing. It's like every mm -hmm. opinion I've already read has been from people like me. I got to see what the normies think because the That's normies me. are going to be like, what is happening? Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm excited, to hear, I'm excited to hear the normies. Uh, when it comes to something, when it comes to Final Fantasy, where you're a normie, when it comes to just life in general, you're a freaking geek. 
<laughs> Absolute yeah. freaking geek. Uh, Paul with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Please tell me that you hated it, Paul. That felt, I felt like that was in 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 uh, sharp contrast to the previous message. No, I didn't hate it. I loved it. It was great. And we'll talk about that more later. Uh, Darwin, thank you so much for being in the tip jar. Always appreciate it, Darwin. Oh, you had a message and I missed it. It says, uh, uh, it says uh, excuse me while I go change my underpants. That intro did things to me. Oh, wait, you have to change your under. You, it was like a premature ejaculation. You liked it so much. Was you that what that was referencing? Yeah, Yahtzee. I mean, I was going to say Yahtzee's rubbing off on you too much, but that didn't work. Dad, well, but you know what? I said it anyway. So hey, fuck I've been you. talking about pre-jack way before I met Yahtzee. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Well, let's be clear here. Yahtzee didn't invent pre-jack, okay? Absolutely not. <laughs> Yahtzee didn't, Yahtzee didn't invent hard hitting journalism on podcasts. That was me. Uh, King Dad with a $2 dono. Thank you so, no, uh, so much. Eric should know this. Marty has no breaks. That's true. I got to keep going. You can't, you can't is, put up a wall to stop this is, a pod. This is all lining up really too well, and I don't like it. <laughs> this is the theater of the mind. It's fine. Uh, Harry Sun, five Australian dollars. Thank you so much, Harry Sun. Happy Leap Day from Australia. Just finished installing Final Fantasy VII myself, so I've got my day all planned out. Hope y'all have a great day. Uh, that is that is that is awesome to hear. It is a beefy download. So if you're planning on playing this game when it unlocks in your region, if it has not already unlocked. Get that, get that preload in, because let me tell you, it's a large. It's like 150 gigs. Is that just normal? That's just what games are now. Uh, quadruple A ones, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> off. Uh, Abdel Corrales, uh, thank you so much for the dono. Hello, guys. Hope you're doing okay. Can't wait for Adventures Night. Also, Nick's stories for hiring people are very interesting and weird. <laughs> <laughs> Omar was like probably the weirdest. I don't know if the rest of them get as weird. Most of them were just like reaching out. As a DM or something? Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. See, except you. You showed up at my door at Final Fantasy and said, well, please let me talk about this forever. Please. Uh, Somehow you found my address and just like, let's move on to Final Fantasy. <laughs> Sephiroth, they need And I just know. gave you a job so you'd leave me alone. <laughs> what have they done to Tifa's undershirt? <laughs> I hope mom has taken it from us again. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Holly with a 49 don't know. Thank you so much, Alex. Nick, what is your reaction to the news that a Blue Mountain State reboot with Alan yes. Richardson attached to it is being shopped around Hollywood? It I exists. Don't think, I don't think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's real. I don't um, know what they're going to reboot either. They don't even hey. look anywhere near college age kids now. He, he looks too scary. It'll, it'll be like, all their kids or something, right? No, I kind of hope they're adults and just beating up on college kids. Just like fight them. That's yeah. just a, that's assault. Not in college. It's not. College has its own rules. No, that's not true. That's still assault. <laughs> what, what college has yeah, its own rules? What college did you go to? Okay. Purdue <laughs> University. Uh, he also he said is. how he uh, bombed uh, an audition for Thor. Because <laughs> he said he didn't give a shit. Yeah, he's like, I didn't give a shit. I didn't think they'd like want good acting, so I just like went in there and I thought being muscular would be enough. <laughs> I mean. We're not far from it in curtain, my boys. Ah, womp womp. Uh, Rattlehead with a $5 dono. Thank you so much, Rattlehead. Did you attempt to master the piano mini game as a trophy hunter? I get the feeling this one's out of reach. Uh, I was so confident in the Final Fantasy piano mini game, and then I was like, this is so easy. I'm so good at this. And then they kept getting harder, and eventually by the end, I like couldn't even just pass them. And I'm like, we just gotta skip this. I just can't, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. I was also playing on the portal, and there's just enough lag time to where mini, uh, rhythm games on the, the portal like being streamed, like the, the lag is just enough. For the normal combat, it's totally fine, but for those uh, rhythm games. You're or playing, I'm really bad. I was you're just playing, playing this gorgeous game on your PlayStation Portal? What, what are you I'm doing? I'm sorry that I had to play from a hospital, Nicholas. Oh. I'm sorry that real no, life entered the for equation. For shame. Nicholas. I feel bad. For shame. I Look what you made Eric do. Wow. <laughs> the wow, poor boy. Really. <laughs> uh, Max KO with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Max. Uh, sup, guys? Currently bum rushing my way through the integrate DLC before the game locks t- unlocks tonight. I like how all these comments are already about Final Fantasy. We haven't even gotten there yet. Uh, you'll get there quick. Just put on easy. Uh, the the DLC is like f- five hours long. You'll be great, and it does directly tie in. There's a lot of Yuffie, so getting that Yuffie backstory is good. You got to Yuffie. You got to get five That's hours it. of Yuffing it out. I forgot to go back and play that. 
You should have youfed. You're going to be confused. A man's going to show up with all sorts of cheese on his face, and you're not going to know who he is. She already showed up in my playthrough, and I don't want any more of that. Oh, Yuffie's great. She's great. Oh, my God. Her and Barrett, Barrett does not have time for her bullshit. I don't either. Well, is that the prevailing uh, opinion on Yuffie? Is, is, are most people pro Yuffie, or is she kind of a. I think a people thing? are going to warm up to Yuffie. She it brings a new dynamic. Everyone's like very serious and shit, and she's just there. She's just obsessed with fucking materia and treasure. But she's also like she's she's ready to kill some people for the cause. <laughs> <laughs> she also, she's not worried about getting bloodied. Um, so yeah, she's at the great. end of the day, we just need killers on our squad. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Listen, we're going up against a one wing. We just need someone who's going to kill her. Um, there's no good transition to this. This week's been bad. <laughs> this week's been bad. This is the summer story. Uh, like we mentioned at the top, uh, the uh, layoffs that were uh, prevalent across a lot of last year that made it one of the worst years in terms of job security in the industry's history uh, have continued and rolled into this year. Uh, earlier this week, uh, PlayStation uh, let go of 900 employees, which is 8% of its workforce across studios. Uh, and uh, some studios were shuttered, like London Studio, which has been working predominantly on VR things recently, but is known for stuff like The Getaway in the past. Um, but those layoffs also affected the major studios that make their biggest games, including Naughty Dog and Gorilla and Insomniac, which is insane that Insomniac had layoffs because the big story was like, you made Spider-Man 2. That was our fastest selling game ever. Well done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some projects that had not been officially revealed uh, had been uh, reportedly canceled, including a Twisted Metal live service game. Uh, and so that was um, the Sony side of it. And then on the EA side of it, this is news that was just breaking um, like two hours ago, is that EA has let go 5% of its staff, which is 670 employees. uh, And that includes uh, shuttering studios like the newly formed Ridgeline Games, which was going to be uh, the studio that made a single player Battlefield game. So that game is canceled and that studio has been shuttered. Uh, The uh, Respawn uh, single player Star Wars FPS has been canceled, and uh, EA has said that they're just focusing on their quote-unquote mega franchises now. So your so Madden, that, your FIFA. The, the FPS that was canceled, that is an unannounced one, not the Mandalorian one that was announced. That was no, the, there that was no the Mandalorian game. game was announced. So this yeah. was oh, an announced okay. game that had no details other than a first-person Star Wars game from respawn a week ago a report came out which i assume was an employee leaking it as a hail mary right to see if you could jump up support saying that it was going to be a mandalorian game that was kind of like republic commando um sure but that has been that's been canceled and then uh you know they've said oh we're still making a new star wars jedi survivor game or jedi whatever the third one's going to be um bioware is still working on dragon age and then shifting on to mass effect uh but Again, so if we're we're only two months into this year and uh, two of the biggest publishers in all of gaming, one of them a first party, one of them that seems to be winning the console war and constantly breaking records with their games being sold, uh, I have these massive layoffs. Like there's there's just thousands upon thousands of people who whose livelihoods have been completely shattered and who no longer have jobs and people just might leave the industry. And so this is just talent we're never going to have again. Um We've talked about this a bunch. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what else to say other than, like, this fucking sucks and this isn't slowing down. Yeah, it's, it's uh, <laughs> I think the age of $100 million single player games, unless you're, you know, CD Projekt Red or Bethesda, maybe, is uh, going, going away. Yeah, those $100 million budgets will go towards Battlefield and live service stuff. Whatever that means going forward, but yeah, like EA, EA, like you know, saying they're gonna shift back to their original IP. Like, what does that even mean at this point? Because their top selling games are Jedi Fallen Order and Apex. Well, Apex is a free to play game. They're sports games, and then they haven't really had any other massive single player launches. They're talking about you know Skate being one of their pillar franchises. When it's like, since when? Since when is Skate one of your pillar franchises? You haven't had a yeah, game in a decade. You know, nuts. Dead Space? Is Dead Space going to be one of those pillar original franchises? Well, they've said that they're... Um, I think when they mean like their, their franchises or IPs, they're also talking about characters, because they've said Motives, uh, Iron Man game, and uh, the EA Seattle, the new studio's uh, Black Panther solo game, are both yeah. still in development. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. And those were both of those games, in theory, are single player games. So mm-hmm. this this seems like 
the out for these really big companies that are going down this path seems to be if they can't garner that sort of big blockbuster attention with their own uh, original IPs or just IPs that they have a legacy with, they're going to attach that production style to another big IP like Harry Potter or Marvel or Star Wars. Yeah. And the oversaturation of that other thing, like the, you know, the character based IP based movie and TV thing is basically going to invade and oversaturate video games over time. Right. Like that's what seems like EA is saying the opposite though, that they don't want, they want to focus more on their own original stuff and not license. You guys just said like, what do they have? Well, yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's like, they they don't have any Dragon Age, Battlefield, Mass Effect. (laughs) We're just going to keep getting sequels and sequels and sequels from, from them. You know, they throw a hundred million dollar budget at Immortals Vavium and that tanked harder than well harder that and their uh, their one beforehand was that uh uh the monster hunter like that you reviewed casey wild wow. hearts. Oh, oh, yeah. wow hearts yeah which i just imagine didn't do well i don't know no one ever talks about that game so i just I mean, they, they, like, and the thing is those games ended, were ended good. the support for it already <laughs> yeah yeah those yeah. those games were good uh the the issue is that they didn't sell and like the reason that they didn't sell was oversaturation right like there were too many big ass games like that yeah. like those games were so those games were good like they were of a bar that you should want from a game at that scale but there were just so many more games to take the attention away from them within the year that is like in order to compete like do we have to do more than this like that's that seems un, yeah, unsurmountable they did, right they did release in february that should have been a summer game that i don't even know if that ad. would have helped like the no, throughout I, the entire year stuff was dropping yeah. that was just yeah the, the Neither of those games should have been 2023 games. <laughs> That's almost yeah. the problem. It's yeah, like... that might have been that might have been it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know what EA. I thought EA kind of had it figured out with Jedi and you know going back to more single player games and yeah. you know Dragon That's Age, but really good. Yeah, but it seems like they're now going back to chasing the money again, focusing on sports and whatever Battlefield's doing. Like, I, I got to be honest. Like, I don't, I. Just, I don't really think a single player battlefield game would sell well anymore. I just don't, uh, you know, there's, I, I, unless it's bad company three and maybe it was, but even that, like, I mean, what's the last single player shooter that sold well? Is it fucking half life two? I mean, call of, <laughs> <laughs> call of duty, call of duty, single players, oh, just single player. Single player. Oh, yeah, the guess, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein game series is better. Was it like, yeah. Was Bioshock but those don't even like move, like really move the needle. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not in the way that not in the way that EA is looking to. But no. Um, so I mean, yeah, I'm curious like how Indiana Jones does as a first person game because I feel like is outside of Twitter it didn't really set the world by storm. I didn't hear any of my friends talking about it. You know, normies and stuff like that. Um, it's because you don't you don't hang out with enough Jones heads. That's what we <laughs> call them. Yeah, folks who uh, love Indy. I was always people are bringing up Doom and that Eternal. Game, uh, we, we those are good games. We don't, but they didn't sell tens of millions. Copies. Yeah, they weren't like super huge sellers. Yeah, Bioshock yeah. Dishonored Doom. That was a long fucking time ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Games are like that years old. Yeah, Metro um, Metro Exodus. Yep, that sold very well, but all, over a long period of time, that sold well. Yeah. Um, um, so I yeah I just I just don't know. Like I just I, you know all these all these publishers are going through. They all overhired during the pandemic. They all staffed up, built a ton of new studios during the pandemic as all the profits were up. Everything's everything has slowed down. There's just too many games being released. Money's expensive. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, a lot of people are like, well, a lot of these people can go indie. It's like, well, nope, because that's fun that funding has dried up too for it was a lot right, of right at the end of the stream today. Yahtzee was like, I hope that all the devs shouldn't be sad because they can all go indie. And I'm like, Yahtzee, it costs so much money to make an indie game. There's, like you can't just be like, Oh, I don't have a paycheck. <laughs> I'll just go indie. My my children don't need to uh eat yeah. and my my partner doesn't need health insurance. I will just go indie. Like that's like the point oh oh one percent can do that. Yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody I've heard from is just funding has dried up. From you know, there's all kinds of funding two years ago for indie games, but I think and unfortunately, like with the end of March is the end of quarter one. uh, I have a really bad feeling we're going to see a lot more layoffs in March as we get towards the end of that quarter. I still 
I still think a lot of these mid-tier publishers that spun up during the pandemic, I think a lot of those are going to go under in the next six months. Uh, just like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to name names on here just to not be a dick, but there are some publishers that like I was excited about and they just haven't done anything big sales wise. And I guarantee, uh, the ones I'm thinking of are probably going to go away within the next six months if they don't have a major release, which they won't. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a bloodbath for like, I think probably the rest of this year, honestly. Yeah, and yes. once once all the smoke has cleared, will will this have solved the problem that they're looking to solve? I, I mean, the the industry is clearly in a contracting stage right now, uh, or contracting stage. You know, like these major publishers got too big too fast. They can't keep up. They they all jumped in on the live service train, hoping mm-hmm. it was going to balloon their profits. Shareholders are pushing them to. You know, you saw the report from Sony last week where they're like, our margins are too low on our games. We're we're making 100 million, 200, 250 million dollar games. And we're not, you know, the margin on that. Let's say you're bringing in 30 million dollars in profit off that. That's not enough <laughs> to make it worth the share. Yeah, not, while. For, not for, you know, infinite growth. Yeah, yeah it's not yeah, enough. Yeah. For, it's not enough for a game to be profitable for the AAA companies. So like they it's, all. It's like crazy that like if if like, again, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Gorilla. Like if the studios that made Uncharted and The Last of Us, uh, the Spider-Man games and the Horizon games, which all sell tens of millions of copies and are just fucking buried in awards, if they can't do it, fucking what does this say for anyone else? Like, how does this how what what happens unless you are a uh, rock star and seemingly still have infinite money, which there is a world where Rockstar releases a game and it's a fucking dud because there is. Everyone who has been bulletproof has taken a hit at some point. The two that haven't yet, I feel like, are from Soft and Rockstar. So we're gonna see what the which one of those is gonna take a hit. But um, we like just just last week though, were we not talking about how Nintendo is flush with cash, no debt, and of all of these big named publishers, have the only CEO who has taken a pay cut when their uh, decisions actually cause the company to lose money. Japan's wild because Japan also has like crazy labor laws to where yeah. it's like you just can't like, like yeah. you just like well you just can't fire these people like you just got to make less money okay um, and, and but it's weird because that seems to be working out for Nintendo like okay let's just make less money right now a little while later we're still you know the highest rated games of uh the generation of the year the highest awarded games well think also about the most we're... money Think about where all the companies are that are laying people off. Think about where they are. No, no, that this is. I think this is the point that I'm. I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah, America sucks for for labor laws. We know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like, uh yeah. just as as dependent as big corporations tend to be in terms of following trends. You would think one of them would follow Nintendo's trend in that way. But as soon as as, as soon as that trend has to do with the money they make in their pocket, it's like f that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we haven't heard a single story out of the major publishers of any executive taking a major pay cut to save jobs. Not not a one. single one. Deck Nine just had layoffs, and their their uh, head of head of heads of studio took pay cuts to try to negate as many jobs as they could from being lost. I mean, like that's a and that's a smaller smaller studio, but it's the major publishers. No, well, yeah, that's because those guys at Deck Nine are probably like the heads are probably wealthy, but they're not. I'm so rich, I'm not a normal human being anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The heads of all these uh, these AAA publishers are so rich, they are no longer normal human beings. Yeah. What do you, what do you call that? Is that like an ascension or like a mutation? I don't know. You call it what's, <laughs> it's, it's, I call it the attains back. <laughs> it's, What's roll yeah. about? That's what I call going, it. Going back to uh, what happened to us in games media, it's guys at the top, they don't make shit making decisions that's every that's every company yeah it's every company McDonald's. that's fucking yeah, well, really the wendy's too. guy being like we're doing we're doing surge pricing at dinner time and then like people are gonna go into wendy's and dave thomas is place. rolling in his grave fucking dave thomas flipping like a fucking square patty is he dead he died yes r.i.p yeah he's a real one <laughs> yeah yeah i no, like, actually like, like a really, he's like a really good dude what the fuck is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I was like, yeah, the AAA, AAA industry just really, unfortunately, needs a shakeup. It doesn't mean I want jobs to be lost or anything, but 
something something's got to change there. I mean, like this, and people have yeah. been saying this is unsustainable for years, and now we're now we're reaping. Does it, you know, does it just crash? Because like I like this, like just cutting all this talent does not solve this problem. If the problem is like our games aren't selling well enough, you don't fix that by making worse games because you have less talent who can do it. You know, over more time now because there's less people to do it. Like this is a trend that just continues to go down. Like our game is just over after this. Well, that and the problem is all these studios are just losing institutional knowledge. Like the turnover right. on these games. You have franchises where it's just dif- different teams working on each one. Whereas you know, with Final Fantasy, they've they've said in interviews that eighty to ninety percent of the staff who worked on Rebirth or who worked on Remake worked on Rebirth. Like that is insane to be able to have a team that many of them go over to the next one. Cause like, imagine like the shorthand they have, like how they know how to work in this, in this world and together as a team. And I think you see that. I think that's part of the success you see with the consistency in both Nintendo and from software is like, mm-hmm. and even certain indie studios like um, super giant is a team that like has been like a, a core team since the beginning. And so like their games, you're like, Oh, your games keep getting better because you guys have built this relationship over the course of 15 years. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I think the live service model has really, really fucked up all these major publishers into tricking their shareholders into infinite growth. And when that growth mm-hmm. slows down, we have to immediately make layoffs to make up value somewhere. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're Insomniac and Spider Man just sold 10 million copies, and you still had to lay people off. Yeah, I mean, you said it yeah, earlier. Like, point of it? What, the, what the fuck is the point of continuing to work here? Like, yeah. if we can get ten million sales, and that's still not enough, like, what do you what do you do? <laughs> what do you do at that point? Yeah, like, we need every, graphics every, just go back. We need every an uglier part of that games. Uglier no more, games. No more puddles that are shorter, <laughs> and that are made by people who uh, get out of work at five o'clock in the in the evening and get to go home. I just want games to be worse. I want all games instead of making tens, just make a bunch of fucking eights. But have a job. That's but also I make half as many. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. And stop making every game open world with a ton of filler content that nobody interacts with ever. Yeah. And make more games where he plays animals. <laughs> like uh, like lionesses. Just to make hep- just to make KC happy. Story <laughs> sequel. Well, where you get to oh, you get to be the lioness. Think about that. You Great. get to Great. you get to choose Great. between a whole pride of lionesses and see which one is right for you. Yeah, I know which one I'm going after. <laughs> God damn it. It's Nala from the Lion King. Uh, Beastmarch for the final. I don't know. Thank you so much, Beastmarch. Uh, just joined the stream looking for some happy conversation, but I guess not. Don't worry. We'll get back to talking about how I have a crush on that lioness. She was great. She was voiced by Beyonce in the film. That's true. Doing? That's God. true. Good taste. Uh, Old Hunter. With a five dollar dono as well. Thank you so much, old hunter. Companies will rehire folks they laid off for lower wages. This is on purpose, generating a fake economy crisis to drain more cheap labor out of fear. I don't like this. I don't like. I don't like how this all works. We need to rethink this. Well, we need to re- like, all the, these headlines are kind of going to shoot that idea in the foot because who's coming out of college, especially in like Gen Z, is wise to corporate shenanigans. Like they don't sit around and wait to be a victim of that sort of stuff like they they will nope out of it asap so you're not gonna you're not gonna hire some new fresh bright-eyed gen z guy at a company who just in the last couple of years you laid off a thousand people they're like no (laughs) i'm not gonna do that to myself i I was i was actually like just having this conversation with my dad the other day because we were we were talking about like his his job and you know he's he's from the baby boomer age and you know he's he's always like don't share your salary with anybody blah 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 and i'm like Uh uh-huh you you realize like that was a corporate thing, so you your colleagues were getting, you. getting paid. Yeah, right. so I'm mean, like they they want you to yeah. not tell people what you're getting paid, so they don't know you're getting screwed over and not being competitive with. Did he was he like receptive to that, or was he like, no, nah, that's bullshit? He, he kind of sat there and thought about it for a second. When you think like, about it, you're like, oh wow, yeah, yeah, yeah that does make sense. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we become a team if we know what each other makes. Like we have each other's back. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I was like, I will openly talk about my salary with anybody in games media because I'm like, I knew where I knew where I worked and what I was getting paid. <laughs> like, I know That's what other ridiculous. people get paid too. I see those salaries. Ridiculous. Um, Dower Dodger with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much, Dower Dodger. Uh, having met some C-suite people, you need to be a bit of a sociopath to casually ruin people's livelihoods, and it's reflected in their actions slash attitudes. I, I gotta like it, every... you look at their eyes. They got they don't have any light behind them. Yeah. Every 
every statement that comes out from these companies like we had to do this for the increased value of our company i was like yeah you just got rid of people that brought you that value dipshits yeah. <laughs> like i i can't stand it i i'm like i'm super privy to it now because of what happened to us and so like i get a little my the hair is on the back of my neck stand up when i see those messages and i'm like i got that message fuck you <laughs> yeah yeah, and it's never taking never taking uh, responsibility for yeah. it. And so, yeah, like when I got fired, CEO didn't come into my call and say anything. I had, you know, like why don't you why don't you as a CEO go in there and fire people at your desk like they used to? If you're gonna do uh, it, they, they, you they, have to go. They would hire a company years. like in the hit film Up in the Air, starring <laughs> uh, George Clooney and Anna Kendrick. Yeah, and they're professional. They're they're people companies hire in order to lay people off because they're trained right. in that. And he's training Anna Kendrick in it. You mm-hmm. know what happens at the end? She, she lays him off. into a meeting. <laughs> oh, you yeah. know it. Up in the air. Uh, yeah. 2017. Jason Reitman. Uh, at, the, at the risk of getting yelled at, these people that make all these firings and do it through a preordained message, you have no balls. Oh, and I'm speaking exactly back. To, I'm speaking exactly back to the guy that fired me. You have no balls. Why are you? Who are you yelling at now? They're not. He's not watching, unless he's in the he chat. He probably is. Shout out! I don't think he's watching. I don't think he's watching. Me. You got to well, do podcasts for several people, not for one. Remember our um, whole incident with what was his name? Shit eater, or what was that guy? He's, a, he's our biggest fan now. His yeah, name I know he did. Not he was shit eater. I'm, I was not <laughs> yeah, that. I remember. Right. Well, if you don't remember yeah. his name, then <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, speaking of not eating shit, no, actually speaking of eating shit, never mind. Uh, this this week's Pokemon Direct wasn't very good. <laughs> it was, it was, I tried to spin it positive, but um, they announced uh, shit I don't care about, and then two things that I think are pretty neat. And one of them is a Pokemon uh, trading card game pocket, so a mobile version of the Pokemon card game okay. that looks like it's going to kind of be. Marvel like Snap the production game. values of like Marvel Snap, but like very much addictive in terms of like how you open packs of cards. It's like the pack is on the screen and then you sort of like tear it with your finger. And I'm right. like, ooh, this is going to be addictive. And they're like, two free packs a day. And I'm like, oh no, I'm going to become a dog. Absolutely. Two free. I kind of want to be monetized. Like just hearing you describe it. Yeah, sure. like, Nintendo you know, trailer. Like, yeah, I don't know. Nintendo the trailer. trailer's being shared. Oh, Eric, you're gonna get us demonetized. Eric, Nintendo you doesn't do? want you to show the tr- like the commercial you never said for Nintendo, their thing. you only said entertainment. <laughs> Any anytime we show Nintendo stuff, I think we get yelled at. Oh, you don't say that. You didn't tell that to us. Oh. I think Nintendo, that was we, no, we're fine. We're fine. Why was it assumed? Look at it. Eric doesn't know what to do now. It's That's all why. frozen. <laughs> He's all scared. <laughs> you scared Eric. <laughs> Eric, you're fine. We don't need to be monetized. The monetization we make on this podcast is very little. It's fine. <laughs> That's why your super chats and everything. Look, Eric's scared now. Look at you. This guy's a fucking orange screen. He doesn't even want to show any of the Pokemon stuff we he, can talk he knows, about. He knows Nintendo's Towering in the way. corner. Eric, yeah. I think you're great, Eric. And Nintendo, Eric Nick's a liar. Uh, the other <laughs> game was Pokemon Legends ZA. I believe. Is yeah, how do you pronounce it? Is, is it not Za? <laughs> it might be Za. I don't know. Z two A. Pokemon Legends. Za. Legends. Za. <laughs> this is how I've been reading um, it this whole time. The next game in the Pokemon Legends sub series, which had RCS a few years ago, mm-hmm. this is coming out in 2025. It takes place in Kalos, which is the Parisian French region from uh, Pokemon X and Y, uh, and uh, it takes place entirely in uh, a single city, Lumos Lumois City. Uh, I don't know which one is the way to pronounce it, but uh, it's like their version of Paris. Uh, and so they've said like the whole game. Uh, uh, takes place inside this city which seems pretty cool like it seems like i like that concept i like it the concept nick you did joke earlier you said well they can't make cities and i was like that's also true <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, i'm playing pokemon violet right now because i got so bored last night I, I i started it up and that like you literally in the school the kids are just floating in midair and 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 why did you play there's so many better games to play I don't know. You have Final Fantasy Seven. You have Persona Three. You have the coos. I have have this weird thing right now where like I just can't play those games during the week. Like I need the weekend to play those games. I feel like I can't get invested. I'm just too tired. Oh no, I feel that. Just too Um, tired to be invested in the story. No, I hear that. I'm always tired. Look, Eric's so afraid to use moving images. Eric, (laughs) I'm I'm let's I'm I'm voting. We bring the trailers back. 
Listen, we're already getting monetized. You showed it a little bit. Trailers. You might as well do the rest the of it. Super chats then. <laughs> if you're already a little bit into a robbery, uh, then yeah. you got to finish the full robbery. Uh, send in send in super chats to to charge up Eric. <laughs> <laughs> put batteries in that man's back. <laughs> there he is, back. Um, so this is coming in 2025, which means uh, for the second year in a row, there is no core Pokemon game, which is interesting. Um, yes, agreed. Good. Because uh, yeah. one thing everyone has said about Game Freak is that y'all stick to the schedule and that leads to shitty kind of project products that like should have used more time in the oven things that are are not taking i know the switch is an underpowered console but like compare those new scarlet and violet to, to tears of the kingdom and it's night and day um so it not coming out till 2025 uh maybe cross launching on i imagine it's not just going to be switch 2 but i could see it being like play the fancier version on the super switch kind of thing um which could be cool so would the difference between those consoles be enough that one of those versions is going to be like significantly different because Nintendo has never done that really. <laughs> no, I think it would be a like how you played Breath of the Wild on Wii U and I played right, yeah, because it was same game built for the Wii U and then it sure, kind of yeah. it to the stronger one. Yeah. Um, so so going off of that logic, knowing how uh, well, Ar- I mean, Arceus wasn't as poorly optimized as uh, Scarlet and Violet, right? Like that one was just a hell of a lot better. uglier. I yeah, mean, yeah, it like was, it, it, it just ran fine. Oh, it was it just kind of like, ugly. Oop. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, built like built off of that engine, like maybe without the natural terrain, they can get you know a city to look a bit more palatable. No, the Neuroblock. little cities in Violet run like garbage. <laughs> but that, but again, that's that was a different one. Like, I don't I don't think um, I'll believe it when I. Well, see I mean, it. it's probably the same engine or whatever. But like, I like those are different teams, right? Still like Pokemon. This, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe that they put money and effort I mean, into that game when I see it. I, I I'm trying to be optimistic here. Generally no. speaking, like I don't think any of this There's is four going games to work. in a row have <laughs> ran like shit. Yeah, I, I don't think any of this is gonna work. Like uh the Nintendo needs a lot more than two years to kind of revamp what Pokemon is, and they're doing it so slowly. Like they should have started this a decade ago. Like by yeah. now, we'd have had like cool ass Pokemon experiences. Yeah. Like Call me in a decade. We'll see. We'll see where they end up. Yeah. The power yeah. three will like set the world on fire, I guess. <laughs> world three. That <laughs> world three kicks the door in. Is like, I'm here. I'm here for the power world. Um, yeah. So this doesn't, this also leaves a big question of, I kind of assumed there was going to be a Pokemon game this fall. So it's like, what's Nintendo doing this fall? If the new console isn't coming out till next year, they've, of their announced games, we have uh, Super Super Princess Peach coming uh, in March and then Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion port coming afterwards. But like, that's it. So what do we, we got to yeah, You just answered the question of how Nintendo has all this money because they just keep remaking games <laughs> that they're already done. A little bit. Yeah, but I mean, they also they like, keep last year the $40 they made Pikmin for 4, you. Pikmin 4 and, 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 and uh, Mario Wonder and um and they sold well here's the kingdom they're all yes. very good nintendo's great nintendo's great fuck off nick nintendo's great <laughs> kick rocks uh, no nintendo's nintendo is great pokemon not so much well pokemon okay. games pokemon like period pokemon monsters great. so you have nothing against pikachu right it doesn't yeah, mean, pikachu pikachu is, is i've been uh, uh look it doesn't I've matter been, what they do with this game because that trading card game on mobile if it's anything like marvel snap is going to yeah, fuck yeah that's money. that's gonna destroy the fuck like, i, I want to play that i already connected <laughs> into my 401k it's, it's just <laughs> drawing money from there um yeah I, I i started playing pokemon black i never played that one uh that's mm. that was a, a a regular ds1 that takes place in new york and let me tell you doesn't feel like New York, um, but it's pretty <laughs> fun. It's, it's the only one that has like a, a core structured story, and it's like there's these like terrorists who are like, we want to liberate Pokemon because you are all enslaving them, and I'm like, maybe they're right. <laughs> you guys might have a point. Yeah, yeah I'll take a pamphlet. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it a read. We'll see. I don't want to commit to anything, but I'll give it a read. Uh, Dower Dodger earlier with a fifty dollar donation. Trailer Ooh. your little heart out. <laughs> <laughs> you can show anything, uh, not anything. Please don't show. Please, please don't show bad things. Uh, and Abdel Corrales, thank you so much for a dono. After talking so much about layoffs, I feel like I need everybody in the podcast to use some corporate speak just to look professional. You know what? You got to buy low and sell high. I don't know. I don't know anything about corporate speak. Margins. Uh, look, the KPIs. They're just not doing it for me. Hippies. Yeah. 
Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta uh, go from three million views a month to ten million views, or the KPIs don't reach targets, and then you get laid off, and or sorry, you get fired because you're a nanny. Because <laughs> you're a nanny. <laughs> Like yeah, I feel like yours was uh, overly specific, Nick. <laughs> I think they wanted some general. I think they wanted some more general <laughs> corporate speak. Um, <laughs> okay, there's no... Uh, nah, I don't want to go down that road today. I already said it. You already went down that road. You go down that road every stream. You get so like, mad at the people. You set me up. You have, Nick, Nick, you carry so much hate inside you. you no, gotta, I have... I you just gotta have, let go of that weight. It's Nick, passionate love hate. It's not passion. You gotta let go of that weight. You don't have to carry it with you. Yeah, this, they win if you carry it with you, Nick. This is like a, a Christ-like crown of thorns Look, you have on your head right now. Think about both it. The, both the handles on both of my door walls broke off this week. So I have a lot of pent-up anger. Did you break I don't them? think that was gamers' they, fault. They were already, they were already <laughs> I'm blaming it on them. That sounds like it was like whatever architecture firm built your fucking Nick <laughs> 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 But they were they've been loose since I bought the house. You should tighten them. And then they I did multiple times and then now they have completely mm. snapped off. <laughs> Maybe you have too hard of a grip. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta stop be... opening doors so so rocky. Yeah. I do. Well, I just needed to get those KPIs out the door. So Yeah. <laughs> you gotta use force you got the kippies. Uh we're getting ready to move on to our main topic. But before mm. we do uh, before we move on to talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and everything else we've been playing and watching this week, uh, stay tuned for another uh, word from our sponsor, Spell Rogue. Hit it, Eric. Sponsored by Spell Rogue, your next deck building roguelike obsession from Guidelight Games and Ghost Ship Publishing. Available now in early access. Cast powerful spells with the mythical mana decks as you manipulate rolls to duplicate, split, flip, and enchant your cards with spell effects to bend fate to your will. Because Spell Rogue has deck building and dice rolling, and that's double the nerd thing. Experiment with dozens of legendary artifacts and hundreds of upgradable spells to build some truly wild combinations. And those will come in handy as you attempt to cleanse the land and annihilate the monstrous Void Walkers. Because let's be honest, voids are very dangerous and nobody should be walking anywhere near them. Head on over to Spell Rogue's Steam page to learn more about the game and join in on the early access adventure today. Because those mana dice ain't gonna roll themselves. <laughs> I agree, started. Jack Packard. That was a that was a great ad. I want to. I'm going to call out Speakeasy for my call out today. So it's just buy a new doorknob. See, I would Speakeasy, but I can't because the entire fixture on the door completely broke. So I have to buy two new door walls. Sounds like you shouldn't have door walls. You just Still have angry door, door wall. It. So the so the entire shit. door fell apart, not just the handle that opens. Like and the handle connects through the door. Sure. The metal prongs in both of them went. <laughs> so I can't just connect a new uh, handle through it because <laughs> the it's completely stripped out. So like so it, a, there's a circle a where a door knob should be is what you're saying. Well, no, there's handles, and on the other side they connect into this little screw thing. And yeah, like those... a door knob is two pieces. Like, but it's, it's not a door knob. Of a it's door a handle. Door. Well, a handle door knob they do the same function. Door wall. Yeah, but it's all it's all connected. <laughs> That's how it's how it functions. Yes, yes, they, they connect like that, Casey. Casey, <laughs> uh, True Mando has a great point. Just put up some beads instead. Look like the, the back third of the Spencer Gifts. I think that'd be great. Yeah, um, just house all your pornos. See back how there. a door is made. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> put all your pornos in your black light and your, and your weed paraphernalia there. Um, speaking of pornos, black light, weed paraphernalia, I got it. To play all of Final Fantasy VII, and let me tell you, I'm I was this was great. This has been worth this has been worth fucking twelve years doing this in the games industry was worth being able to just play through this in a vacuum without listening to anyone's fucking opinion and just mm. be done with it. I feel great. I feel like that that load I was talking about earlier. I, I gotta stop talking about that. I'm you're like you're I realize I said load. Is that what you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe what they did to Tifa. Like I was not rated PG today. I can't believe what they did to her. Um, 
<laughs> but no, yeah, Final Fantasy Seven uh, Rebirth is uh, is is out this evening. It might already be out. Uh, where you uh, all live right now? I did a bite sized on it that uh, the incredible Eric uh, produced and edited. Uh, give that one a watch. It is a non spoiler uh, bite sized, I promise. Uh, but the game is wonderful. It took me seventy five hours to roll credits at a pretty. Um, I was stopping to smell the roses a lot. I was doing a lot of side quests. I was. Uh, I was I was trying to do as much of each area as I could before I moved on, uh, and I and I loved it. Uh, uh, Story wise, I think it is excellent. Um, uh, without going into spoiler things, I think the first ninety five percent of the story I'm totally for. I think it, uh, it muddies a little bit near the end, but it's not bad whatsoever. However, gameplay wise, I'm thrilled by their take on open world these open world uh, zones, which. I'm kind of surprised by it because I have such immense open world fatigue, but I think the reason it works so well is because I, at least I give a shit so much about these characters. And mm-hmm. part of it is because I've, I, I put in the work beforehand to, to, to replay all the games in the series and in, including seven and, and Dirge of Cerberus and, and crisis core and remake. Um, but part of it is like the game does a really great job of like making this party feel like a family that starts bonding. And it does that by uh, like a sitcom does where it will pair off characters and different things like parks and rec will have an episode where it's uh, Ron and Jerry or where, you know, where, where it's uh, uh, Aziz Ansari and, 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 I, why can't I think of any Aubrey Plaza? Like, you know, that kind of thing where like, sure, sure, you, sure, sure. you'll get new dynamics of these pairings and you learn about both of them individually. And then they get a bond that ends up being called back to later. And um, having that across the entirety, like almost every side quest you go on has something fueling that. So it's like, yeah, you're like trying to track down this lost Chocobo, but you're doing it and seeing like red 13, who's a fucking lab rat dog like come to terms with the fact that he has this like super smelling and the party's like, no, it's great that you have super smell. Like that's like, we, we want to use this. He's like, I'm a lab rat dog. I don't want to be able to do this. <laughs> he, he was um, mad about that, about having a superpower. Yeah. Cause I think it was like them being like, Oh, you can help us track it down. He's like, Oh, sure. T- tell the, you know, <laughs> we need a super scent. Let's get the rat, lab rat dog. But like, <laughs> by the end he's like, no, that is just cool. This is a gift. This is not a curse. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. People are saying the fast and furious thing. It is kind of, it's kind of like, when Fast and Furious was good in that way of like, you like every member of the crew and they start to feel like a family. Well, I mean, yeah, that's just, that's just the mechanics of an ensemble cast, right? Sure. Like, yeah, like every character is a character. Mm-hmm. And so intermingling them in different situations and with each other is the content. Like that's the yeah. thing that you're there to see because all the characters are good. Mm-hmm. So like that, that's dope. But this is, this is new for this version of Final Fantasy? Like, or is this something that when you were playing the original game or some of the other spinoffs, you got that sense of like, oh, this character is like this and I like them already. And this is just more of them in like this new element. I think this game particularly does it um, extremely well. I think it's something that was always kind of there, um, but, uh, you know, in both uh, Remake and then into uh, Rebirth, like, by taking the time to really like pump the brakes and be like, okay, here's the first five hours of the game. We're going to extend it into a 30 hour game. Mm. And then this thing is, here's the remainder of disc one. We're going to extend it into a game that took me 75 hours by doing that. It takes all of the familiar beats of final fantasy seven. And it's like, okay, you're going to get to Costa del Sol, which in final fantasy seven is like, a short little goof scene where you go to this beachside resort town and you have a, a couple moments and then you move on with your journey here. It's like a five hour chunk of the game and there's all this cool shit that happens there. And you're like seeing all these angles of the characters. I know that's a gross thing to say about the beachside resort. That's where all those Tifa fucking thirst picks. Came from. <laughs> but like in each place you learn so much about the characters and it, and it again takes the time to like pump the brakes and give you those pairings. And, and, um, and that's crazy. Cause after what is, the franchise now is what 25 25 years old 35 30 35 years old yeah, so after 35 is. years of all these other media things you're telling me that there's new shit about these characters that they're writing about like stuff yeah that there's, nobody still, there's only I mean, there's only one game with those characters in it though no there were well, like no, movies there's, and yeah oh, there's oh, oh, yeah. advent children and dirge cerberus okay. yeah and crisis core in the three books um mm-hmm. but uh yeah, it's just really, it's just really, really impressive. And I think it was like the way they handled it. We're turning this into three games. I know there's a lot of people who are like, uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, 
uh, this is like them trying to get an extra dollar out of you by taking one. This should have been one game. It's so clear that like, no, this shouldn't have been one game. This would have been a mess if this was one game, because okay. like this was these two games combined are disc one of a three disc game. And granted, disc two and three move at a, a quicker pace than disc one. But um, yeah, so it I'm, is I'm, three games that it is going to be a third game. Yes, there's okay. going to be uh, there's one more. So uh, I'm assuming if it takes the same time, that's a 2028 game. Uh, you know, it was it was just about four That's years crazy. ago that the first one released. Yeah, so yeah, um, there's a lot of people. There were a lot of people mad on your bite size. They're like, it's they should have put all the game on one disc. I was like, do you realize how much games here? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't. I, to, yeah, to me, it's just like it's a very. I don't know. It'd be like being mad that the Mass Effect games are on like they're three separate games. Like, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Or being mad that the, the Star Wars trilogy is three separate movies. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Don't get mad at me. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Nick, you've got a chance it. to play a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. I, I enjoyed remake a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Really, really like the characters. Like, they just have a dynamic that did not exist aside from uh, uh, in Final Fantasy 16. The two mm-hmm. main characters, the uh, I forget both of their names, honestly. Clive, <laughs> Clive and uh, Joshua. His brother was Joshua, and the girl's girl. name girl. Oh, what was her name? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I forgot. What, what was who? What was her name? Lucy, Le- 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 Loreline. Lorelai Gilmore. It was Lorelai Gilmore. Yeah, <laughs> that, uh, sure. that sounds but, fake. But uh, yeah, just like in that game, I only had connection between those two characters. Like those are the only two characters I really wanted to spend time with in that game. But in this game, like yeah, I'm definitely like you know I want to know more about Barrett and Tifa and Aerith and you know mm-hmm. it's just a it feel this one really feels like an actual adventure and I like that. It's been a while since yeah, I've had a game of adventure. Yeah, especially like the opening moments when you're just you're going from one area to the next to the next and there's no cutscene to go into those new areas mm-hmm. or anything. It just feels like a direct progression as you go through this world. And, uh, and I tweeted about it too. Like this, the scale of the world is mind blowing yeah. to me. Like you get yeah. to, uh, what's the place called after the swamp, the in military district, Junon, Junon. Yeah. And you see that giant gun and like the, yeah, the tower yeah. Like, holy shit. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, it, it's amazing. And again, it's all stuff that like, it's cool that that's working on you because it worked on me. Cause I was like, that's the thing from my dreams when yeah. I was a child and it's here now. <laughs> um, but it's, it's cool that you don't have that point of reference, but you're still being like, Oh shit, this is a cool looking place. And look at the size of that goddamn. Camera. Oh yeah. Like you just, it's a world that you just want to explore. Like it's yeah. really, uh, yeah, it's just it's just really really well done. Like, I, and mm-hmm. as much as like I've been too tired to like really sit down and just get sucked into it, but I've been playing it like chapters, and it's working really well that way too. Like, I basically yeah. get to a location, I stop for the night, get to a new location, stop, and oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm about to head to the the Costa. The oh, you're place. about to see. Oh, so it's <laughs> gonna get the season to uh, Everyone has a very modest bikini, and then they also have a little something something. Like Cloud has like he's wearing like a Hawaiian shirt and shorts, or you can just have shirtless. Cloud. He just nips out. Yeah, he's nice. like nips out. Yeah, he's it's we. He's just that's like, how I play Sephiroth in Smash. Just no shirt. Yeah. <laughs> just nips out. Barrett's only costume is a sailor uniform, and I'm like, why can't we <laughs> Barrett's nips? Uh, yeah, the, the the one thing like about Rebirth that has just been so much better than most other RPGs that have like all these characters and all that is like mm-hmm. just the dialogue just well like it's it, they don't talk forever. And that's what mm-hmm. it makes me really happy. Like you go and talk to a character, you don't have to go into a whole cutscene. You don't have to go into a whole uh, option selection. They just have their little conversation, and you move on, and you get the story. And like I, yeah, the, it just keeps me moving. And I realize, like playing this, how tired I'm of games that are like, it, like Banishers. I'm having a really hard time continuing with because every time you talk to somebody, you got to stop, stare at their face for like ten minutes, <laughs> have a yeah. have a conversation. And, like if it just kept me in the world, kept me out of these static, boring cutscene shots, and just let me let the characters talk, get me through and get me out and get me moving. Like, I'd be so much more engaged with it. Mm. Yeah, I think that's, like, the thing that Remake and, and Rebirth has just done really, really well is, like, getting rid of some of that RPG stuff that has infiltrated so many Western games. And it's just keep you in the world at all times. Combat, talking, cutscenes, whatever it is. Yeah, that's one nice thing is you don't um, you don't feel that kind of like menu grind in this game. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. you, you'll occasionally check it when you get new stuff or if you want to switch out your material load or anything. But like you can go along. It's not like God of War. You're just constantly getting something that's like incrementally better. And you're like, oh, I got to do this. And oh, I got to upgrade this. Like you can just wait and do it all. And, and 
big chunks when you get to certain areas, um, which yeah, is nice. I think, yeah, I think my yeah my only eh, you know, is still the combat. Like I mm-hmm. like the combat, but man, it just takes too long to kill everything. Like I almost I'm playing on normal right now. I might just drop the story just because the combat takes too long. Yeah, it is, and they're very spongy. Um, yeah, um, I, mm. I, I, I don't blame you for that. Yeah, and some of that stuff, and then some of that, there's like a lot of different systems in the game, and like one of them is like each weapon has its own little sphere grid, and I'm like, yeah, at a certain I point, I was like, just that. fucking do this, just do it yep. for me. I don't care. Yep. <laughs> it's not the, yeah, the, game, the game's not hard for me. I just, yeah, just I, I just want to do the story so I can keep moving. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It shouldn't yeah, take me 20 minutes to, like, to take out a boss. <laughs> being like, I want to get to the next thing because I want to see... Like you said, that sense of adventure. Like, I want to see them go to the next place. And I'm really excited because there's, like, so many fucking cool... Like, if you've played Final Fantasy VII proper, like, all of those places you go from leaving Midgar to the Temple of the Ancients and the Forgotten City, that's mm-hmm. all in the game. Like, all those places are in the game. Yeah, Remember so when I, I talked about are. Cessna and Gengaga? It's there. But let me tell you, <laughs> Cessna and Gengaga, a highlight. Gengaga's great. If In terms of places that got a glow up in the game, Gengaga, top five. I guess uh, to to answer your question as somebody that has like never played Final Fantasy VII proper, like I don't really feel lost in the game. I'm sure there's references I'm not getting mm-hmm. to other material, mm-hmm. but I mean, like the story and remake was easy enough the to follow. Other material, <laughs> that's what the magic's called in Final Fantasy VII material. <laughs> <laughs> Thank On you that note. Us. I was like, good. I was just like, nice. uh, Paul with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much, Paul. New content idea: adulting. With Calandra, first I thought that was a sex thing, but no, this just sounds like hanging out with Nick and like going to Home Depot. And do you ever get a hot dog when you leave Home Depot? Like it was a little treat. Does your Home Depot have a hot dog? They sell. I don't know. They don't sell. Home Depot does. Home Depot is like a little Chicago. It's like a Costco thing or Sam's Club. No, it is a Costco thing as well. But this is like a little stand that sells. Oh, did I just? Maybe that's just. It'd be weird if my Home Depot and my Home Depot alone had hot dogs. (laughs) Somebody's somebody's selling you bootleg hot dogs. Yeah, like is it? It's like it's in the Home Depot or it's just right there. Yeah, like right as you're leaving, (laughs) there's like a small hot dog cart. Chipper shavings. There's a hot dog cart. cart. Yeah, I don't mean Costco. I know Costco. I'm a card carrying Costco member. My the Home ho- Depot. The hot dogs in Costco aren't they're not good. They're not good. The pizza though. The is, pizza. Is, wow. What are they the doing to that pizza in Costco? <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. It's so cheap. <laughs> right. What is, is what is going on? It's there? Like you have perfected basic ass pizza and made it cheap. Well done. Uh it is weird how good that pizza is. Dower Dodger with with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Uh, Marty has that post rebirth glow. I do, and it feels good. And now I moved. I'm I'm back to Persona Three. Let me tell you. Those guys talk a lot, Nick. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> they talk uh, a lot. They have are, you gonna, are you gonna play Grand Blue Fantasy Relink? I feel like you'd like it. I mean, yeah, but I also have Persona and I still need to go back to Yakuza and the games just keep coming out. Huh. That's fair. Yeah, I've got like five games I've started. Yeah, there's too many. And I got Pokemon Black. The hit new game Pokemon Black that I have to play. People keep asking me, Marty, what's You can't play more than one JRPG at once. What are you doing? That's not true. But if one's Pokemon Black, you can. No, that's wild. It's too much. Honest. It's too much. Too much turn-based combat. Uh, it's, it's not too too much turn-based talking. combat. It's, it's yeah, it's, talking. The, it's all the dialogue. Oh, uh, but in Pokemon, boy. I don't care what they say. <laughs> They're always <laughs> just like, "What a nice Pikachu!" <laughs> okay, that's fine. Whatever you guys have to say. Uh, Chaotic Archon, been a member for a month in the Green Gang. Thank you so much, Chaotic Archon. Played remake. Wall Market still sucks. Amazing game. Wall Market is great. Wall Market's kind of like the little red light district, a uh, little, a little bit like the walled city. Uh, mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. There's all sorts of cesspools there. It's great. You <laughs> go to the horn dog shop. You go, you go, fucking lift weights with the boys and the ladies. It's great. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ticketron with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much, Marty. Can you speak to anything on the story changes? No, uh, I obviously cool. will not spoil anything and go into that. But uh, I still, uh, I am still a fan of. If you played a remake, you know that they're like sort of taking a meta approach with this and the re- remake is sort of like not only is it a remake but it also feels like a sequel or also feels like a commentary on what it is like to remake a th- project of this magnitude uh, and that's still present here and i'm still a fan of it so nice two thumbs up and there's uh, and there's no way to get that meta context without at least knowing the story of the original seven or is that something that is baked in? Like you can rec. Well, I guess it'd be hard. You, for you no, to you say. can recognize it because it's literally like the thing in remake is that there's these like ghosts that look like Dementors from Harry Potter right. that are like ghosts of fate. 
Mm. And so at one point a character is doing something and you're like, Ooh, that's not what happened in the original game. And the ghosts of fate intervene to make sure they stay on the familiar course. Ah. But then the characters are like, well, fuck these ghosts. I want to start my own course. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what you get. Like the characters are like quite literally trying to, um, like break out break of free from the shackles fate. of their past. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eric said, or uh, George Lucas says, I just want to see cloud hit his sword against Sephiroth's sword. Is that a, se- is that a sex thing? <laughs> it's gotta be a sex thing. <laughs> it's also gotta be a sex thing. Compare and swords, which one is bigger? What about a door wall market? Door wall market. Uh, what else? What else have you guys been playing? Watching. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of, uh, Bellatro. Balotro, 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 however you say it. That game is I know it every time. The poker game, the poker roguelite that's not poker game. Pokemon? Turns out the developer never even played poker and still made a poker game. I, I, feel, like he, I feel like he was trolling when he said that. He had I feel like trolling. He was trolling. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, I adore that game. God, that game was addicting as shit. Don't start it if you need to get something done because you will not stop playing it until you beat it. Do you need to know how to play poker, though? No, I had no idea how to play <laughs> poker. I may know. I may know how to play poker now. I don't know. I know it doesn't oh, work like you might know how to play it through this game. Oh, I at least know like the card combinations now. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, boy, if you like those roguelike deck builders, this game hits all of that and more. And it is uh, it, like you pull off like you use the joke like uh, so like in a lot of roguelikes you get like uh. Uh, fuck, I forget what they're called. Like these little pieces, basically, that give you different buffs or debuffs or whatever as you play. Uh, mm-hmm. Artifacts is what they call them in most of them. And artifacts in this game are Joker cards, and all these Joker cards have different buffs and and all that kind of stuff that you can do. And so you can create like these crazy combinations where you get crazy amounts of points, and like the game gets progressively harder. So you gotta get through. You have to get through eight eight rounds to win, and that's hard because like by the end you. At least on the first run, you got to score over a hundred thousand points, and you only get like a certain amount of hands to do it. So you basically have to just keep. You have to like pick a lane and kind of stick in it. Like I, I the one I finally run was uh, uh, like just buffing up two pairs like incredibly hard, <laughs> and so it's it's a it's a really weird. Like if you know poker, you don't really know this game. Is basically what I'll say. Sure, it's about like breaking poker, right? It's absolutely breaking poker, and it's yeah. just it's a really every visually, sound wise, I don't know, it just it hits all those stupid little knobs in your head that are like, I, I just need more of this. <laughs> well, it's I don't know. I'm I'm always a fan of seeing like the. It's neat that like the big successes this year have been sort of like out of left field. Uh, your power world. Everybody's tired of all the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. So yeah, yeah. that's and that's like the. Like the thing that's been crazy for like I'm I'm that audience that is tired of a lot of these games being too long, too too much filler shit and all that because like I used to love just sitting down and playing a story based game and like the cool graphics and everything like that. And my tastes have changed so much in the last like two years where I'm like so gameplay focused. I'd rather sit down at night and play six hours of Balatro over playing six hours of Final Fantasy remake. <laughs> it's like or rebirth it's just weird it's i think uh yeah i think you know if it, normies like me that don't go back and replay games all the time marty uh are just kind He's of burnt making strays <laughs> just just kind of burnt out sure like all these overly overly produced games that cost hundred millions of dollars for little details you never pay attention to with writing that's really subpar that you don't care about because that's i've been thinking about like going back to red dead redemption too because the writing in that game is so good the story carry me through it and like i've started so many games where like immortals of avium writing's just terrible i just didn't want to play it the writing is not terrible it's in so immortals bad. of avium it's just it's good <laughs> like it's not terrible it's just good it's, okay. it's an okay game <laughs> like it has like yeah right it's an okay game like yeah. it's the gameplay, I think, is is a little better than okay. Like, I like its its flow and whatnot. But like, you're like, yeah, its story is something you have seen before. Like, it's definitely not doing anything revolutionary there. Yeah, I don't like. I don't even care if a story is doing anything revolutionary. I just want it to be good. The dialogue to be good. And like, that's what is so refreshing about Rebirth. It's just dialogue is written well. It's written mm-hmm. like how like 
I don't, I guess I can't really say that's how people talk because that game has everything from cowboys to weirdos, but (laughs) cowboys to weirdos, the big two. (laughs) That's how Marty dreamed people would talk. That's how I dreamed my (laughs) lion and my, and my large, my large trusted waifu would talk. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I, the triple A, you know, going back to the start of our podcast today, it's just like these triple A games are all so overly produced with so much dead filler stuff that nobody wants to deal with. Suicide Squad. Damn, Suicide Squad also taking strays in this podcast. I don't know why I finished. I don't know why I finished it, but I finished that damn game. And then it's like, yeah, you gotta go kill you gotta go kill Brainiac 13 times. Like, nah, no, no. I'm not doing that. One for each one for each (laughs) brain. That's all that's the brain cells I have left. (laughs) Oh no. RIP. Uh you've been playing or watching anything else? Uh, I did start uh, Shogun last night. Yeah, Ooh, maybe I was hyped for that show. The reviews have been tens across the board. It's got yeah, beautiful it's cinematography easy. and aesthetic. Writing is already really good. Uh, I haven't I haven't watched episode two yet, uh, so I'm going to do that tonight. But holy drop the hell! First two, and then it is uh, weekly for the remainder. Yeah, not a not a show that like I mean FX has done some high production shows, but this is like on another level. This is like HBO level production from them. Nice. Yeah, it's really yeah. it's really good. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I can't wait till all that. Darren, yeah, Darren loves the whole thing. So um, can I was going to ask, can I get access to Darren screeners? But I know the answer is no. <laughs> no. Uh, like, I just want to <laughs> I just want to watch it all right now. I don't want to wait. You yeah. might have to watch it on a laptop, though, which sucks. Yeah. That's one yeah. thing shitty about screeners. Well, sometimes you got to like log in. And, and sometimes they don't right. have like all the effects in and everything either. Or did you just have your name st- like stamped on oh, every right. watermark? Yeah. I, yeah, I just I just watched a video today that was that. <laughs> yeah, you're like I don't. This is not a way. I had uh, I had watched a whole. How season am I gonna leak last, this? Last year I watched a whole season of something early, and it was uh, my name was stamped across. It spelled wrong. It was Silva. I'm like, oh fuck! This, this is, is so distracting. Like, this is ins- <laughs> This is distracting and sort of insulting. <laughs> and I should leak this to be like, it's not me. I don't know who the Silva guy is. But hey, <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, three minute learn Hulu is where Shogun is. Uh, yeah, uh, and then the other the other show I've been watching, which I know people are curious about my thoughts on, is Halo season two. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you've been seeing my thoughts on Twitter, Halo season two is actually good, like, it's good, awesome. I'm, I'm having a good time with it. Uh, episode four was reached last week, and like, it was really well done. The writing is a lot better in the season. They're not spending a lot of time on the stuff that you don't care about. Like they're still continuing some of those storylines with like uh, I still can't remember her name, but you know the girl that was featured prominently <laughs> in season Cortana. one, not Cortana. Uh, okay, that was the only one I knew. The girl on the moon rock place, uh, whatever it is. But she's she's got more character dynamic even this season too, and like everything's mm-hmm. kind of converging to reach, and so it. Uh, it, it's working. It's working, and they've refocused, and the the focus being on you know the fall of Reach has been really good. Um, is that like what the season is about? Yeah, it's definitely like fully like yeah. Reach is not done in one episode. Thankfully. Okay, okay. So the yeah. Um, so does that mean in theory next season would be Halo? Yeah, pretty much. That's where I think where it's going because like it's definitely so it's definitely a lot closer to the books now and where they're taking things and they're pulling. Like you, you guys won't get the references, but like there's um, two other Halo books that are like really popular from like the original set of Halo books, Ghost of Onyx and Cole Protocol. And both of those books get really deep into uh, the politics of you know, the Halo universe and all that of like Oni and the UNSC and everything like that. And they're actually pulling stuff from those books into the larger lore. And it's it's really working well for me. Um, so, so what was and that might be the problem, but what was the first season like in the, in terms of the timeline? If, if this is Reach, which last was... I remember in terms of the game timeline, Reach was the earliest time pe- period, right? Uh, not not really. No? <laughs> the, early, the earliest time period is like this whole civil war between. Yeah, but in uh, terms of the games, it was. The yeah, game. in terms of the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, yeah nothing took place before Reach game wise. I can't remember if Halo, Halo Wars did or not. Oh, that doesn't count. 
you know, that's, yeah, that's oh, yeah, you from no the idea. sky. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what was going yeah, on. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember Halo Wars was, but yeah, as uh, yeah, Reach and as far as the games that you know about, yeah, uh, is the earliest in the timeline. So yeah, Halo season, <laughs> Halo season. I don't really know what the fuck Halo season. Was. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost <laughs> like it, it exists because if they start it now with Reach, it's like all right, well, well now just, you're like, on track. Nothing really <laughs> happened in season one when you go back to it. You're like, yeah, not a lot happened. Yeah, not. Uh, yeah, Master Chief got laid, and hell yeah. They just really yes. wanted to avoid the uh, the Steve Rogers conundrum <laughs> where people were like, hey, worry, guys. this guy ever had sex before? Yes, we showed it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they were doing with Halo Season 1. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, like, do I need to watch it to understand Halo Season 2? You don't. Like, I think you just watch right. a summary of the plot points of 1 and be fine. Yeah. Uh, like, you may not get some of the character development, but that's, like, giving it somewhat of a prop. I guess I don't know. <laughs> There's not really any character development for like him and the squad. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can definitely start with like Halo season two and, and be fine. Uh, and you almost immediately like the the politics of it and like the way they're handling the Spartan program and everything is a lot more interesting already. So there you go. that's a okay. weekly show. Yeah, it's a weekly show. So uh, yeah, I'm like actively looking forward to it alongside watching Shogun and. Um, okay. it's, is that you only know, my, four episodes so far? Yeah, it's only four episodes so far. Um, so, uh, in, in terms of other recent video game adaptations, like I don't know if you've seen like Twisted Metal. Uh, I know you've seen Last of Us and stuff. Not, I haven't watched Twisted Metal yet. Like, how how is it ranking? Like, how far or close to those sorts of things that people it's, are liking? Do you think this is measuring up? It's still its own thing, and like, uh, like the if you're just a fan of like the video games, like there's still a lot of people that are like, why is Master Chief out of his suit all the time? Why is he, you know, doing that and blah, blah, blah. Like, uh-huh. if, you read the, if you read the books, he's not in his suit all the time. Like, he's lives kind of a normal soldier life in the books, too. Mm-hmm. Like, he's out, he's out of his suit anytime he's not, like, he's on base or in a ship or whatever. Um, or so bone him down. Or bone him down, I guess, yeah. So it doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't really bother me. And I think, like, the prevailing opinion, like, at least the Halo subreddit, which is notorious for hating everything Halo, is actually like enjoying the show. So that tells you, like, if the most maybe that's what the first season fans... was. <laughs> the first season was just, hey, this is as bad as it can get. So how about you lay off <laughs> when we start trying to actually make this show? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, like, eh, as a as like a straight up game adapt- adaptation. Mm-hmm. But like, it's. it's <laughs> if you're into the books or if you want more of like, cause like e- even when you play the halo games, like how much of the world of halo do you actually get? It's so centralized on the rings and the covenant. You don't really yeah. learn anything about the UNSC or anything. You they just try get a lot of that. proper nouns, which yeah, well, they try. I'll, I'll be honest. I love it. <laughs> they tried to do that in four and five though. Like they tried to expand it a bit into like, you know, you go to the thing, Helios, the covenant home world and all that you go mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, some of the outposts that the humans have in Halo 5 and stuff, but like you have well, no you know connection. Halo, to that. Halo 2 was pretty big on just expanding the universe, like they straight up took you to hey, here's the enemy story and like their history and lore. And no, no, that's what I said. They, they focus on the covenant, like the covenant is like the story of those games, pretty much. Yeah, like, yeah. You, don't, you don't know shit about the UNSC or the outer colonies or anything like that. That's true. So yeah, like and Halo Four and Five explores that a little bit, but yeah, this this definitely is like it's taking Halo, its core concept of the Covenant bad, you know, and expanding it to and here's the whole here's the wider Halo universe and the politics around that and fighting the Covenant and you know the different like Owen Oni and UNSC and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's it's definitely like a yeah, it's just a broader more detailed show than you get from halo and i think that's where a lot of conflict is coming for a lot of people is like halo one through three is very simple yeah and if you try to adapt that into a show there's not a lot there to use really yeah yeah it'd be hard to like take the halo one game and just be like well we're gonna turn this into a season you're like are you yeah <laughs> just run around shooting <laughs> shit. yeah, yeah this was kind of just a mission is what this was yeah, yeah you basically yeah. have you land on the planet you save some troops you get eaten by the flood and you blow up the planet <laughs> like there you go. that's that's the plot of Halo episodes one. later yeah yeah 
I mean, like Reach, Reach itself has a lot more story involved because you know it's the development of Cortana, that's the home base of you know the Spartan program. That's yeah. So yeah, it's it's really good. Like it's a it's a solid, you know, war story just like the Reach game was, and the book the books are and everything. It's uh, I'm 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 glad season two has uh has has taken a turn, like a turn yeah. for the positive. That's great. Yeah, as far as as far as video game based adaptations, I I you know, it's Last of Us and then Halo and then Witch well, which is the book adaptation. Uh is there any other good game adaptations besides the anime? Animes don't count in this from this one. I don't know separate. why you would say such a blast. No, 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 they count, they count. I'm talking about just live serve live live action like ones. Live action ones, okay. Yeah. Super I guess we always have a brothers it. film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also the first one was with Bob Hoskins. <laughs> we watched it. Wow, we well, that's, that's that's done with the very bottom Monster Hunter. Hole there. <laughs> Monster Hunter. Remember when they yeah, were yeah, in that village and that. they came back <laughs> to America? Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. Um, that was great. Uh, before I went on way longer about Halo than I meant to. Sorry. No, that was great. You needed <laughs> you needed a uh, you needed a place to talk about it. You couldn't talk about it last week. You At least it's getting redeemed you, you, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Lauren Fark with Fire Lardono, thank you so much. Weirdly, Persona 3 Reload scenes are far, uh, feel shorter and snappier than P5Rs. Kind of feels a little light in comparison. It, they are definitely yeah. shorter than 5. Also because they're kind of based on, like, in the core game and in Portable, they're, they're, they weren't as ver- verbose, I would say, as they've gotten with 5. 5, they just won't shut the fuck up. But it's great because I love them all. I love every single one of them. And Dower Dodger with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much, Nick. Finally got to see those masters. <coughs> nope, no master cheeks were, in this one. And they were great. And they were great. Yet. Nope. Nope. Um, Casey, what have you been watching and or playing that you would like to talk about? Um, I've been watching quite a couple of things. Um, the the. Well, I guess I'll start with what I've been playing because I, I went down a grand blue fantasy rabbit hole. Because, mm. like I mentioned, I've been nope. trying to watch the anime. <laughs> A grand like a <laughs> Yeah. Um, the anime is super boring right now. Like, I, it, it is a struggle to watch a single episode of that show. Um, but it, I, it did do the job of uh, familiarizing me with most of the main cast. And that was kind of the whole point because I wanted to jump into the fighting game and uh, the action game, Relic. And I've been playing both of those as well. Um, the fighting game is fantastic. I love Versus Rising. Like, it feels really, really fun to play. Uh, any character that I've messed with feels really fun. Um, and it does Street Fighter's modern controls, essentially, as its base control scheme. So, like, it doesn't have another version. Like, it came out of the gate this way with the last iteration. This is the second one. Um, but they started out from the beginning to just be a, a much more approachable 2D fighter. And so, like, they have all these sorts of, like, cool mechanics. Like, every single character has, like, neat kind of gimmicks based on like uh their characterization from like the the mobile game or like their characterization from the actual anime and stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, but the thing is the anime moves so slowly that there are a lot of characters on the roster that i have not come across yet and like they've maybe cameoed one or two times in the anime but not enough where they told me even their name like i don't Uh, (laughs) like i don't know who this character is this character looks really really cool i have no idea who they are what they represent nothing like that but just the core cast, you know, I know enough about. And, like, they're mm-hmm. fine. Like, they're archetypes. But overall, like, they're kind of flat. Like, all, all the characters don't have a ton of personality. Like, they're much better designed than they are written. Yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, and that, that, that is a bummer. Because um, switching over to Relink, I was hoping that since the anime is kind of trying to guide you through maybe what the core plot is that relink since it's set as kind of like a filler thing, like it's a side story that doesn't tie into like some sort of main lineage. Like it's not retreading the, the the anime story, for example, you know, they have the opportunity to kind of maybe do something a little crazy. Like I haven't put a ton of time into it yet, but I'm surprised how close the characterization is between the two things. Like, Mm -hmm. The, the characters are so saccharine when they talk to each other that, like, I I got sick of it. Like, you guys are so polite. Like, this was nice at first, yeah. but like, yo, can there be like a little bit of tension between yeah, this crew? Yeah. Like, 
like everyone is so happy, so nice, so polite. Like everyone is helping each other all the time. Like I, what is why am I watching this? There's just yeah, nothing yeah. is happening until <laughs> until a bad guy shows up, and then they all fight the bad guy together. Like I don't know. That yeah. seems such like a major, just like storytelling flaw. I yeah, like, like just like the point of doing this without any conflict. Just, yeah. That game, that game is a storytelling flaw because like. I have no idea what's going. Like the game, the game drops you in, and it's like throwing yeah, all these names yeah. and everything. And I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, it's as if <laughs> no, it does. No it does assume you know who these yeah. people are. Like it does. Like and weirdly enough, if you don't know who they are, there's a side thing, uh, where you can kind of get a rundown on like the history of each character individually. Yeah, but it's I had terrible. Of the game to do that. Well, no, no, no. It's it's in the game. It's in a game oh, menu. It oh, it's but it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's terrible. Like, it's it's literally just like a, a screenshot of the character, like like two D art of the character on a text. Yeah, but it's voiced, and I'm a hundred percent positive it's voiced by AI. Like the AI is trained on the voice actors who do all the regular voicing in the game. Mm. So it sounds like them, but like it's read so stiltedly and like like it, it, there's like weird artifacting and stuff. I'm like, this is all of this is is AI shit. Such a but like it's broken up into chapters. So so and there are rewards for this, mind you. So like you go in to learn about a character and that might be something you want to do because like, oh, who's this character? Let me get their history. But then it's like you have to click a specific thing. It does this whole read for you in the AI voice. And then it, it gives you a reward screen. Like, hey, here's what you got for doing this thing. And then it kicks you back out to the main menu where you then have to go to the next chapter and select another thing to do that over again. If you're going to give me a rundown, just give me a rundown. Why, yeah. why make it this weird elaborate thing that then grants you, like, what the hell? <laughs> I don't understand that's, why they would do that's that. Their, uh, that's their mobile game heritage getting in their way. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But that was that's very much annoying. But luckily, uh, I knew enough that I didn't have to engage with that, and I wasn't like desperate for like stat boosts or whatever. So I oh, just, good. as soon as I realized what that was, I was like, all right, nope. I don't yeah, need yeah. to mess with this at all. I will say that that game though, like, uh, to say something good about it, combat's really fun, and yes, also I am liking uh, the combat. Every every area in that game is like looks as pretty as like a painting. <laughs> yeah, the overall art direction has a look that. Like it ties the world together, but it also feels like it reminds me of that Tales of Arise game. Like it yep, looks like yep. kind of like a, a watercolory ish thing, which maybe it's that's a chosen thing, but it also it can make like some of the edges of the characters look a little like blocky in certain yeah, places. Yeah. But otherwise, like yeah, in motion, it is it is a great looking game. Like uh, I like unlocking all the skills for like the different people and stuff. Um it yeah, if you don't like it's, if you don't like Final Fantasy Reverse Combat System, you will love this combat system. <laughs> yeah, it, it it seems more involved than like the, the Square Enix stuff, but it's also a lot lighter than something like Devil May Cry, even though it looks like Devil May Cry. Like if it, it, it's it doesn't feel as weighty and um, intentional, I should say. Mm -hmm. Like you do a lot of moves that are like kind of one button press, and then a lot of shit happens without you having to engage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like the trick isn't in, all right, well, these are the moves for the moment. It's more like these are the moves I should be doing in sequence as my cooldowns come off so that I can maximize my, you know, my uh, DPS while uh, I wait for other meters to fill, like other team party members to like do things that I can connect with. So it becomes like this really hectic chain of events that end in like increasingly flashy and over the top like animations and super moves and stuff. And I have not gotten tired of that. Like it, like for a lot of it, it's like, I can't tell what's happening in this fight right now. I'm yeah, just pressing that's... a lot of buttons, but it still feels really satisfying when you get like the really big, uh, like chain link thing to like the split screen of like four different characters all yelling a, a, a super attack at the end. Like yeah. that actually is super satisfying. Yeah, so yeah. I've been enjoying that. That's yeah. cool. It does have anim every anime trope in the world in the game. <laughs> every one you can think of is there. Every single one. Yeah, it is. It is very. Uh, and I don't even know anime unchanged. that well, but I know every trope is there. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, anime tropes, uh, have you you started uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender? The live yes. action version. Yes, yes, oh, yes. No, I no, I started no, and no. finished it actually. Like I oh, I, I went through all of that. Ten whole episodes. Was it? It wasn't even ten. It was eight. I oh, think. I don't know. I have oh. I haven't watched. Are they short? How how long are they? Like hour long? Oh, uh, they're pretty long. Yeah, they're like fifty so minutes <laughs> each. So what um, did uh, what did you think? God bless those kids. 
uh, they were trying their best. <laughs> they <laughs> they're not the best child actors. Like we like this is Netflix. We've seen some like really good child actors on Netflix. Like the Stranger Things kids are kind of doing their thing. Yeah. Um, I feel like most of these kids are like new, right? Like they're new to acting. I feel like sure in some capacity. Um, I think they grow into it. Like by the end of the season, they're more palatable than they are at the start. But again, like bless them. They're doing, they're doing their darndest. I don't think they're bad. I think they can only get better. Sure. <laughs> uh, that being said, that's what my coach told me when I started hockey. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was right. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, um, I, I have such a fondness for the animated series mm-hmm. um, that it is hard for me to watch this without constantly like having just what the animated series does in my head. Uh, but even with that side by side, I think this is an admirable attempt. Like, I don't think I don't think the show is bad. Like, it's a fun watch. Yeah. Um, it, I don't think it justifies its existence, though, against kind of just what came before, because at its best, it is basically doing exactly what the animated series done. And it's impressing me by being able to copy what an animated show did. Like um, there's, there's a scene where um, Aang is captured and Zuko breaks in as the blue spirit. Folks know what I'm talking about. They've seen that, that cartoon uh, to break him out. And they they nearly escape by kind of chain linking um, these big like ladders, like they're handing each other like these ladders and like they kind of use them as pogo sticks to like go across yeah, like, really big Yeah, just some gap. real cartoony shit. Yeah, like, it's yeah. really cartoony, but it's like a really, um, it's a really fun and hectic looking scene in mm-hmm. animation. They actually do that in the show. Clearly the things are CG, <clears throat> but like yeah. they pull it off in a way where it's like, oh, I'm surprised that they're actually doing this. And like, it looks like it does in the show. That yeah. really impressed me, but it still looks better in the, in the cartoon. <laughs> Because that's just that's an inherently cartoon thing to do. Yeah. So like, I was trying to I was just trying like to from the uh, the previews like the visuals and action all look good, but uh, the everything I've seen from like the dialogue and writing is just. Ew. But that's the thing the the writing for um, Avatar: The Last Airbender is phenomenal, and like even ju- even just getting shades of like the beats from this show, like still pulls out like those same like threads like just the relationship between Zuko and um uncle iroh like the the stuff with ang and uh monk Yatsu, which they they leaned much heavily on heavy heavier on in this show than they do the animated version like mm-hmm. that stuff that stuff works but that's that's all writing that you know came from somewhere like it's not yeah. new stuff they just decided we'll spend a little bit more time in like maybe some of the the more tear inducing stuff from the series like they they were clearly trying to make this feel more mature by making you sad more often, like mm-hmm. referencing like the hardships of war and those situations more often than they do in the animated show, but at the expense of spending time with the characters, I think. So like you, you still hit those beats and I feel like they, they told the story of season one in eight episodes, which is pretty admirable. Yeah. And like they had some really big set pieces that, that did deliver uh, one like that prison break scene I just mentioned that that was a really good scene like that delivered on action and like spectacle and stuff. Um, the the battle at the end also like that one hit like the the big ass war at the, yeah, the Northern yeah. Water tr- uh, Temple. Like that was that was a good one. Um, but like everything else just felt like all right, it's it's here because it has to be here. And then the stuff that they cut, like I I didn't miss it, but also. Maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll go rewatch the animated sure. series now. Because, yeah, because so it was all it, just done better. Uh, what, what what was it that? Because uh, you liked One Piece, right? Like yeah, yeah, action. yeah. yeah. Uh, and it seems like the general consensus is that that was more successful of an adaptation than this was. Like, what do you think it was about that? A uh, funny story because I I figured that out very recently because I, I had that same thought. Like, yeah, like why was the One Piece one kind of mm-hmm. like receiving so much better uh, by me even? Yeah, they got a season two and everything, and yeah, it's because One Piece, uh, for all for all of the love that it gets, everyone, every fan can agree that it is mad effing long. So (laughs) So, you can justify your existence by being like, all right, you're gonna try by being being a much more condensed version of a chunk of that story. Yeah, is a good enough reason to go back over it in live action. Like that makes sense, and it's such a good reason that they're doing it again. 
in anima- in animation. It's insane. What are we like doing? they're doing the One Piece before even the other show ends because they're just going to condense that show and just make it more palatable to watch. Which is which is why I think it's it was such a refreshing thing to kind of just see those beats tidied up in that way because One Piece yeah. One Piece lags as as much as I love it. Like the storytelling lags; it goes on for too long. Like Avatar as a as an anime does not have a ton of episodes that can be considered filler. Like there's maybe one or two. And even those episodes kind of have things that people like love about them. Yeah, and are fun. Yeah. So like condensing that, like you don't get a ton out of it. So so again, like the live action version, I can't see how it's justifying its existence if it's not if it's not trying to do something drastic, which it doesn't. Like this one sticks pretty close. Hmm. Cool. So would you recommend it or not? The Avatar if- Netflix show. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be hard, I think, to recommend because some folks are gonna be like, it's a bastardization because it's just not the thing they like. Yeah. If you want more Avatar, luckily more Avatar is coming outside of this as well. Like they they've announced like new animated things. Like I think they're supposed to be like a a young adult version, like Team Avatar as like twenty something year olds. Yeah. Like a movie yeah. for that is coming out. I think they announced like a Kyoshi movie some time ago. What if you, um, so, like, if you never finished the anime series? Uh, you should do that. You should rectify that sin. What if I watch this first and then go watch the anime series? I'm not disappointed uh, with either. <laughs> no, that's a good way to do it, honestly. Like, yeah. this can yeah. introduce you to the world and characters. Because the thing is, the Avatar, the last Airbender concept is so strong. It's such a good set of rules for, like, a, a fantasy universe that just being aware of what it is yeah. and then going to find, you know, all the other things is is perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, like the opening episodes will hit harder if you understand everything that's going on. And right, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't remember how much of the original Avatar I watched because that was coming out when I was in elementary school. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think, yeah. I think, I think I watched maybe the first season. I don't know how many, how many seasons, four seasons, oh, well, uh, three, se- three seasons of the OG show, and then four seasons of Korra. Yeah, oh. I never, I never watched Korra, but yeah, I think I, I never watched Korra either. Yeah, there was there was a time growing up I just didn't watch TV. I like stopped watching TV until like The Walking Dead came out, and then I got back into TV. Yeah, there was no there was no TV made between Avatar: The Last Airbender season one and The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I was I yeah I didn't watch any TV series growing up. <laughs> like, yeah, it's definitely tuning, in my list. Like, tune into SpongeBob when I was eating breakfast, and uh, I had to watch some. Uh, Something when I got home, and then something before I went to bed. That was it, though. I never, never. Yeah, Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead were like the first time I like sat down to watch like serialized TV series growing up. That's so crazy. Because I, I, I was, I was, a, I was a grown man when I sat down to watch Breaking Bad. Yeah, those are, <laughs> shit, I, mean, I was an adult. I was paying taxes. <laughs> What's going on yeah. there? Uh, but yeah, uh, on top of <laughs> on top of watching uh, the Avatar series. Um, I finally, finally, finally got my fiance to start watching Batman the animated series because I consistently oh. tell her that it's it's on my list of like one of the greatest animated cartoons ever, like just period. And she keeps putting it off. So um, she she finally she admitted to me like she can't do it because like um, none of her friends like there's no points of reference for like her friends and family. So like if she were to sit there and watch that on her own and then like be on the phone with her sister, You're like I have no one to like talk about this. So right. Like, yeah. It's so, like, yeah. she can only watch it with me. So it's like, all right, fine. I'll rewatch it. I don't, I don't mind. Gotta convert, convert them and make them watch it too. Yeah. Next step at a time. She'll, you'll, you'll have her at your side now. She'll, she'll sing the good word. Right. So we did start, we, we got through like maybe 12, 13 episodes of season one season one is a monster it's like yeah. 65 episodes Whoa, or something going on yeah and, and then two and three are like half not even half that like a third of that mm-hmm. um and i think i think it's because at some point batman the animated series updated like all the art and stuff changed and i th- i think they either called it something new or it was paired with the superman series because like i remember growing up that they would show an episode of Superman and then an episode of Batman. Yeah, it was like yeah. packed together as like the new adventures of Batman and Superman or something like that. So I think whenever that happened, the animated series, either the original one had ended already and they brought this one back or they just like, all right, we're just going to do a quick reboot and then tie it together. So like, it was weird seeing that show up as I was looking through the series. They were like, oh, this is all together. This is one thing. Uh, so I haven't gotten there yet because that's honestly, 
that version of Batman, I think, is the better one. But oh, wow. the OG one is still really, really good. It's just it's not as uh, serialized. Like the stories yeah. are much more contained. Yeah, just... yeah, little one-off adventures. Each right. One with yeah. A different villain of the week or whatever. Uh, but they they all introduce like Batman's Rogues Gallery like one by one, um, and Batman's got some good ass villains. Like he's that's got, he's really got, <laughs> that's him. That's why Batman's so cool. His villains. That really is. That's really like him and Spider Man. Like they have like such yeah. good villains that they deal with that like they really do make up the bulk of like what's entertaining to watch. And the portrayals of them on the cartoon are really good. Like yeah, like, obviously Mark Hamill's Joker is like top tier, but um, just everyone like down the line like coolest like coolest version of clayface i've ever seen i love that version of him and, yeah like that like clay clayface's story it's like i'd forgotten that he was an actor like that was like the, that was his that was his character in the harley quinn series yeah. that i was watching afterwards but i was like oh that's a good that's a good justification for him being clay is that he acts with, i had no idea that that's just what he was again i'm not a comic reader all my info yeah. from like most comic characters i've gotten because of these cartoons but i've forgotten that that was his origin and so like him having a reef a reflexive action to be these other things and then like yeah like batman's really good at that it's just just yeah. pairing an individual and like their life story with the circumstances that gives them their villainy turn yeah yeah like poison ivy in particular um she is a lunatic yeah <laughs> like she like she was she was more scary than even the joker uh during her introduction because she legit was like she would she was losing her shit when you hurt plants yeah yeah <laughs> it was like wow i like that's that is a crazy woman she loves plants <laughs> she loves loves herbs such a good show um i'm gonna keep yeah. uh chuck uh chugging through that she actually started watching some episodes without me after the binge we did together Whoa. so did i think you mission's you're like what'd you do <laughs> we were that was the plan she was supposed to just start it and then like you know if i'm around then i can like jump in sure. with her because she she loves to binge like just really long series. like she got through all of criminal minds all of doctor who all of uh just, yeah. just whatever whatever's the longest shit she could find and all yeah. these, like, i'm just sit down and watch this within my free time so yeah. I'm like watch batman there's a lot of batman yeah so she finally did it yeah. it's great I, I, I watched an anime this week did you yeah can you guess which one it is? Vinland Saga. Was it? Uh... Wow, you guys don't follow me on Twitter at all. I don't watch The Invincible. <laughs> That's not an anime. Jesus. The Invincible? No, In Invincible. Invincible. The... Oh, just Invincible. Yeah. Okay. That's not an anime. Uh, yeah, animated. It's, anim it's animated, sure. <laughs> animated, but that's not anime. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Same thing. Invincible's good. Very good. Yeah, that made an interesting Superman story. There you go, Yahtzee. Go watch Invincible. I mean, that's what we talk about is Invincible and, and the boys <coughs> have to take the what if Superman was bad? Did you did, did you talk about it on Windbreaker today? Wait, Monday? We talked about it on Windbreaker on Monday. Yes, oh. I talked about it. Has, has Yahtzee watched Invincible? No, Yahtzee doesn't watch no. TV. What the fuck's wrong with <laughs> I don't know. He, just watch he, TV. he referenced the boys, though, in his uh, he probably review read this the comic book. I don't know, He probably knows what they are. You've probably seen an ad on a metro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's just the big. He's the world's biggest secret Carl Urban fan. Loves love a good dread. Love when <laughs> dread or one of my writers of Rohan come along. Yeah. Um, I've been. Uh, I got Dune fever. Uh, I'm very excited to see this Dune two in the theaters this weekend. I heard it has several worms this time, which is great because the first mm -hmm. one I was like, we Not should get worms. more worms. We should get more worms, and they brought more worms. Here. Uh, Eric, Eric, you just Google and Doom. Is that what we're doing that quarter now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick said you can't show trailers. Now he's just Google and Doom. He's got to do, gotta do train stills. Of thought, he's train of thought Google and Doom. <laughs> Insane. Um, but uh, because of my head injury, I've been. Uh, I was like, I can't just do Dune one and do two. I got to watch everything Denny Villeneuve has done. So I went back to Dil Villeneuve's uh, filmography. I've done a complete rewatch. Um, I'm right. Uh, um, I'm almost at Dune one now because I did Incendies, I did Enemy, did Prisoners, I did uh, Sicario, Sicario Arrival, uh, and uh, then I watched original Blade Runner. Because I can't watch his Blade Runner without watching <laughs> the original watch Blade Runner. Right. So that's where I'm at. I'm now at, I'm ready to watch his Blade Runner. And then Dune 1. Then boom. Theaters. Doom 2. See the worms. I'm going to get the popcorn, popcorn bucket. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a ring on it. And it's going to be great. I'm going to marry that bucket. <laughs> I need to rewatch re Sicario. That, that movie just has 
That movie's sick. That movie's dripping with tension, and I love it. It's good. It is good shit. I can't say uh, I love Arrival. I liked Arrival. I didn't love it. Oh my god, Arrival's so sad. It's sad. Uh, wait, is that the one with the translating aliens? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that movie. It was great. That was him. That was Dennis. Uh, that was him. Yeah. That was Dennis Denis Villeneuve. <laughs> I need to. I still need to. It's not not him, obviously, but Gareth Edwards. I need to watch that creator movie. I still got it in in the box. It's real dumb, but it's very pretty. Yeah, it's it so dumb as rock, but it was gorgeous. <laughs> uh, I but the problem was I watched it um, right after I watched Pluto, and Pluto is such a better take on that story of like, <laughs> can a robot have feelings? <laughs> I feel like Pluto is just way better, and so like the creator is very pretty though. If you have it, you get it in all the Ks you can. If it's 8K, 16K, it doesn't matter. Just get as many Ks as you can and watch the creator. Dang. Yeah. Um, is, is John David Washington uh, the new uh, Idris Elba? <laughs> Where like they, like they Hollywood doesn't know what, what to, to do with, do with quite it? Yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he was... Uh, the problem was Tenet re- when Tenet released. Mm-hmm. I think if Tenet didn't release during the pandemic it would have been a fucking blockbuster and he would have been vaulted. I don't know. Like maybe it, it would have sold because it's, it's uh, Christopher Nolan, Nolan. Yeah. but Tenet is not good. Tenet is not a good movie. <laughs> you need to watch it again. We're getting, yeah, we're in the midst go, of the Tenet go, re-revival. We're going to put you in a room with Darren and he's going to change your mind about it. I, I don't just know. Gonna be he's just going to talk gonna be... at you. Yeah, he's going to tie you up in a chair and talk at you until you say, I love this movie. <laughs> he's like, all right. Fine. You won't understand. It's forwards and backwards. I still need to. I still haven't finished it because I get so annoyed with the audio subtitles mixing on. in you it. Got to put subtitles on that movie. That movie needs subtitles baked in. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this movie? Which is fine. Oppenheimer, cool. great. I could hear everything they were saying. Uh, he must have. Yeah, I'm like, sure he heard the feedback. <laughs> he does not care because he heard the feedback and he made Bane sound worse. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about He's that. real spiteful. I love it. Uh, you feel in charge. He's great. Bane's great. Um, speaking of Bane, I think we're done with the podcast. I think so too. Yeah. Um, I, I can't believe we did it. I'm really proud of us. Uh, Nick, what do you have going on and what should folks check out? Nick, are you going to be joining us tomorrow for this fucking stream? You haven't committed. Oh, yeah. I hey, need to buy that hey. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. You realize, uh, yes, I have a, uh, actually have another episode of Unpacked coming out tomorrow. You uh, because we had to put Java on Adventures Nine to get that finale done, so I had to write a script on Monday, Monday, and edit it yesterday and today. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to go back and fix anything. So if people liked it, so tomorrow uh, you'll get an unpacked episode at 10 a.m. on the unexpected success of Hell Divers Two. Divers, uh, and then uh, tomorrow, yeah, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, I guess we'll be back for shoot the shit too. So more hell divers on that probably because we love that game. Uh, and then yeah, I think what seven o'clock I have to I have to suffer again. No, we're Dude. all hanging. out You get to hang out with your friends before you go to DC. But I gotta play Rogue Warrior. It doesn't matter. The games doesn't matter. It's about the fun. I gotta yeah, play I'll the cocksucker jokes. game. I don't want to bring some jokes. I, already, I I suffered through what was uh, hunt down the Freeman. Which was like this game's so okay. Good. That was good fun, games though. with guns though. When there's a game with gun, you have to play. You're so good at gun. Yeah. R- Rogue You're Warrior. So much better at gun than us. This 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 game this game's gonna make me. More I think it's myself. gonna be nice. It's only four ninety nine. There's a reason for that. Surge pricing. <laughs> yeah, you better buy it now unless there's one You could have like well. made me play two human. That was free. <laughs> that game is like like unplayable though, right? Like it doesn't. Oh, it's playable. It's like it's free can, on like, Xbox. <laughs> Yeah, it's been free on Xbox for a long time. That's they literally, they because of the lawsuit, they literally can't sell it or make money from it. Oh yeah, <laughs> Remember, oh that was one of my top five lawsuits. Which, 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 hold on a fucking second. That game gets to stay listed, but all these other games don't. <laughs> yeah, because it's about Norse gods. And Norse gods <laughs> we didn't even. T- it's so yeah, bad they didn't even take a tax write off on it. <laughs> yeah, how does that work? That is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> also, someone better leak that that uh, Wiley Coyote. Like, act. why, why, why can Please we still play? Movie, sorry, Please leak the Coyote cut. Why can we yeah. still play turns like Two Human and Rogue Warrior, but we can't play Marvel's Adventures? Like, what a stupid. I'm excited for Rogue, War- Rogue Warrior. I keep saying the wrong name. Rogue I need Warrior. to. I need to. My my parents are coming up this week. Oh no! I think they brought me back my Game Informer magazines. I need to see if I still have the copy of the Rogue Warrior cover story. Oh, I thought you were going to invite your parents on the streams. I'm like, fuck it. 
I mean, last time people donated a lot for my dad to come on an embarrassment. That was stream. funny. That, that was, was actually really funny. funny. Uh, but yeah, so shoot the show tomorrow. Uh, I guess I'm gonna suffer through Rogue Warrior tomorrow night, and then yeah, we leave Sunday for Washington DC for Adventures Night Season Four. Heck yeah, yeah. and this Saturday is the finale. Saturday is the finale. Oh my god, so close! Uh, Eight, hour yeah. and a half long episode. Oh my god, that's a beefy one. Uh, so Casey, obviously, aside from the uh, the finale, what do you what do you have going on? Well, the finale and the stream that we're all gonna be on tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, outside of that stuff, um, the last, uh, not last, but the last in a couple of weeks, uh, our big fat geek wedding stream with me and my fiance will be this Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my personal Twitch, Sigma Gears 9. Um, we are still working our way through uh, Return of the Oberdin. Uh, we spent like close to six hours last Friday. Uh, you better just... finish it this weekend or you're going to forget all that shit when you're in that, yeah, that's I'm a little worried about that. We were, we were solving mad murders in succession to the point where our brains were just kind of broken. Like we were like, we were like getting on each other's nerves and shit. <laughs> Cause like it, that game takes so much out of you. Cause you're just trying to piece together this big ass web of intrigue. But we, we solved a lot of stuff. It would also be hard to, uh, it'd be hard to like, for me to enunciate my logic. Cause in that game I was making some real weird leaps. <laughs> And also some like borderline racist ones. I'll be like, well, no, these guys, these you have to. Pictures, look, these got to be the Asian dudes. <laughs> like, you no, know, you you kind. The game does kind of force you to do that. We yeah, got, we yeah. went we went down this rabbit hole. Where we was like, all right, all the all these sick dudes are Indian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. You're like, well, this has got to be. This is who they are in the picture. Right. So we'll, we'll just use we'll just use these Indian guys whenever uh, we get two matches. We'll just go back to our sick Indian guys and do. <laughs> <like, laughs> Nick, if you haven't played this game, this sounds insane, but this is legitimately how you solve some of these puzzles. And it's how kind of the game what was. What is this game? Though. Return, uh, of, the Return of the Oberdin. Oh, oh yeah. I, I started yeah. it. I started it when I was in my relationship. And then my relationship ended it. I quit. Uh-oh. Aww. Easy. Is the game cursed? It's, a, it's, a game. it's cursed. Oh, no. <laughs> the, the game is cursed. I think that's a big part of what the hell happened on that ship. <laughs> yeah. <there's> a, <laughs> like, oh, this is just like a normal mutiny. You're like, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not at all. Much worse. Uh, but yeah, we're having a great time with it though. Uh, she like she she keeps saying like, "Hey, what if we just played a little bit?" Or I is that it. or is that betraying the stream? Like, yes, it's betraying the stream. <laughs> like they want to see. That's great. I love it. So, yeah, so we'll we'll be back doing that. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll maybe do a marathon one and can finish it. But like, it doesn't seem likely because we we make slow progress since we're streaming at the same time. The game also has like you can quote unquote finish it without solving everything. So it's like that's true. Yeah, like some point, call you can, me like, to get on choose the when you want to be finished. Um, that's true like like yes. jack did and he was called stupid and he hated the game after that <laughs> <laughs> judgment uh and then uh yeah we'll have uh kind of a a mixed up uh streaming schedule for the next few weeks uh but some of the familiar shows that you like we probably won't be doing firelink episodes like we said the next few weeks However, we will be doing Windbreaker episodes. Frost and I, Jermaine will probably be joining us. Uh, we, I've already talked with Jess. We're going to be doing some variation of Hidden Gems on that slot. So we're going to we're going to have a consistent stream. You'll see us. You'll see some familiar faces. We'll try to get some other folks on these streams. So um, we'll have we'll you guys you guys will be sick of us by the end of it. I promise. <laughs> Dower Dodger with a fifty dollar dono. Thank you so much, Dower Dodger. All the Hell Divers too. Yeah. Please and thank you. Keep your uh, keep your schedules open for. Saturday, March, Friday, Saturday, March 9th. Yes. We will be streaming live from Washington, we know, D.C. We don't, know the, we don't know the time yet, do we? Uh, no. I know, we'll I know. We will be streaming live from Saturday, uh, Saturday, March 9th from Washington, D.C. Okay, so Saturday, we don't know what, what time it's going to be yet, but it's going to be a very special stream. And when I mean special, Joe Biden's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how special it is. He's His gonna dog's going to come. He's going to bite Yahtzee in the hand. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, Wait. Commander, how could you? <laughs> uh, perfect. So, yes, we will have uh, more to share about that uh, then. But uh, until then, thank you all uh, so much, everyone who uh, watched live, everyone who chatted. Uh, Abdel, thank you so much for the three months in the Green Gag. Live from Washington, his adventure is live. Da -da -da -da. Uh, thank you, Eric for producing uh, as always uh, and for uh, Casey and Nick this was Marty this was Firelink episode number 12 thank you all so much uh, we'll see you on other streams uh, including tomorrow night uh, but then we'll see you in a few weeks for the next Firelink yep bye everyone bye, bye.